Hello. Hello. It's great to see you, Arthur. I think we will wait uh, five minutes more. So before starting, I will make the same announcements uh, probably many times, but first I just want to say that, uh, as you know, this is not a, um, not a standard webinar or a conference. So there will be too many speakers because we are just organizing a memorial event. So I will kindly ask you to uh, mute yourself when you are not the speaker. And uh, also we want to use the screen mostly for the speakers. So if you can also close your camera or be careful about the technical issues, this would be great. And as we also announced before, the meeting will be um, like, it is now streaming live on Facebook and it will be also recorded, especially the Turkish translation, because you know, mostly we will speak in English. So we just want to be sure that the Turkish audiences can also watch it when uh, they want to watch it. And we will wait four minutes more and then we will start the official program and it's, Really great to see you all here. It's a great honor for all of us. And I will also repeat this part again. And yeah, but welcome. Um, once again, I would like to ask you uh, to unmute, uh, to mute yourself. So this will be very helpful for our interpreters. So when you are not the spe you are not speaking, please uh, mute your microphone, and it will be easier for all of us and the interpreters.
Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all on behalf of Progressive Lawyers Association. It's a great honor to host this event today to be together with you on this significant day. Today is the 5th of April, the day of the lawyers in Turkey. Tomorrow, our colleagues from the Association of Lawyers for Freedom's trial will be held on. And the following day, our president, Sarchuk Kozaçlı, and Ebru's sister and our member, Barkan Timtink, will be at the courthouse. Even these facts are explaining a lot about the situation in Turkey. We never considered the day of lawyers as a day of celebration. But for us, this day was always one specific day of struggle. Struggle for the protection of lawyers, struggle for the right to defense, struggle to protect the fundamental human rights, or in other words, to protect the people. As you all know, this was never easy in Turkey, like many other countries, such as Philippines, Azerbaijan, Colombia, and so on. Lawyers have been the target of the repressive state authorities always. In Turkey, for many years, we have been dealing with mass trials, false accusations. Significant number of our colleagues are trying to practice our prof profession under the risk of imprisonment, torture, even deaths. However, this year has a different meaning for all of us. We started 2020 with a pandemic that we were not be ready, we were not ready and had no idea how to deal with it. But at the same time, life was going on. In these difficult days, Ebra and I touch two of our beloved members who were convicted by the Turkey's courts unlawfully decided to protect this decision together with protesting the ongoing injustices and the systematic violation of the principle of fair trial in Turkey. On the, 15th, on the 5th of April, Ebra and Aytaç decided to turn their hunger strike to a dead fest. So now on, the 5th of April is not only the day of the lawyers in Turkey, but for many of us, it is now a day that we will remember Ebru, who lost her life as a result of this hunger strike. After losing Ebru, we organized a significant number of webinars, conferences, demonstrations. However, for today, we prefer to gather together to commemorate Ebru. Therefore, once again, I would like to thank you all for accepting this invitation. And I would like to thank you all one by one for your efforts during the campaign for supporting Ebru and Aytaç, your strong solidarity, your unlimited energy. We never felt alone. On the contrary, your solidarity made us strong and hopeful. I will stop here because we have a very intense and a quite long program, and I want to go on with a very special message we could receive for today. Our president, Sarchu Kozarçlı, who is also in prison more than three years, sent a letter to us, and I'm very honored to share this message with you. Finally, yes, today is the day of the lawyers in Turkey, and we are here to commemorate Ebru, but I also want to send my greetings to all of our imprisoned colleagues. I also want to remember Tahir Alci with all my respect, and I want to share the letter from Sarchuk with you. Dear colleagues and comrades, I embrace you with all my heart. Unfortunately, I can't embrace you physically. I long for Lisbon, Kathmandu, Manila, and Madrid days where we could actually sit around the same table. Luckily, I comfort myself, at least for now, thinking that you cannot come together because of the pandemic either. Allow me to join you today together with the cerebral memory of a young revolutionary woman, a lawyer, a sister, and a beloved friend. The commitment that Ebru Timkik deserves shall be passed on the many future generations of lawyers overstepping the boundaries of our countries and outliving us. Her name shall never be forgotten. The question about the justice, however, a question she raised with her scream that cost of her life remains unanswered by the status Turkish Bar Association, the judicial bureaucracy that is dependent on the ruling power, and the salaried professionals of law and politics. It feels as if we are walking around in a masquerade ball, and the hosts are brave enough to shamelessly call it a democratic state of law. 
They are silent. Ber- Very much like the fabulous ballad Piskopos, named Hukukcu, the mask of Asizade, anarchy by Jasus, Percy Bysshe Shelley. He said, susmus. and many more destructions Adalet played in this ghastly masquerade. All these guys given to the eyes, like bishops, lawyers, peers or spies. This is a struggle for justice we are putting up. A struggle for the rights of the laborers, impoverished, oppressive and disadvantaged. We believe that a just Böyle society of people, a free, a socialist world are both possible and necessary. En this is also what our profession means to us. In that case, no price is too much for us to pay. Kalmadı. Having said farewell to a brood, our most precious one, now there is no other move Ölümse, they can make to intimidate us. Is it imprisonment? Then here we are. Come may the torture, and we have already gone through it. And the death has been our special guest for a while. We shall never give up and never take a step back. We truly are grateful to you for not abandoning the law bureau of the people, progressive lawyers association whose members are together under a wider and inclusive umbrella, our association of lawyers for freedom, in short, the lawyers of Turkey who have been actively struggling. We always believed that we were not alone, and thanks to you, we now know it. We are aware that you are wrestling with similar problems in your countries. The zeitgeist invades every single corner. It is almost like the world is divided into republics that are racing to bring down a global Weimar period to initiate celebrations for a fascist transition. It is as if we are in the 1930s. It is not totally impossible that a larger misery, imperialist invasions and civil wars will shake the dust of the past off themselves to encroach our horizon. We are in the Anthropocene age, where if we fail to stop it, a minority in power will make an irreversible damage to the climate, culture, geological assets, and I'm afraid the humanity as a species. The sustainability of this mode of production seems unlikely. Unemployment, poverty, immigration, xenophobia, racism, misogynism, religious fundamentalism, proxy wars, pandemics, and ecological disasters surround us. No further makeup is enough to cover the ugly face of capitalist imperialism. Dear colleagues, comrades, we should have had our own barricades against an attack of this magnitude. Some of us even thought we had them. The institutions, professional organizations, parliaments, international conventions and boards that we built with a lot of hope and effort in many years were revealed to be a mere disappointment. We are unconstitutionalized. All the check and balance mechanisms, primarily the judges and parliamentarians that were expected to protect us, have collapsed. They became vassals of the dictators. They were suppressed, or to say the least, they were incapable. Shelley comes to my mind again. He said, lawyers and priests, a motley crowd, to the earth their pale brows bowed, like a bad prayer, not over loud, whispering, though art law and God. But why? I'm not even asking about the dictators whose words are featured as law. We already know it. Furious words have the force of law. I mean, why do I refer to Shelley at all? I'm aware of the possibility that an imprisonment of more than three years might have slightly turned me into a romantic. 200 years back, there were different dynamics, enemies, and alliances then. But why does Shelley sound like he is addressing us? You know what? You know what they say. The history rhymes, even if it does not repeat. Maybe I like it because it is good poetry, or more probably. Probably because Korkunç. he is making a hopeful Şeyler call. Shelley again. Rise like lions after slumber in an unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew. Which in sleep had fallen on you. You are the many, they are the few. Please rest assured that my romanticism will never weaken my political realism. I was born in the so-called developing country, what has actually been an ice-cold neo-colonial fascism, and worked as a lawyer under similar circumstances. Things could go worse, and this would of course hurt me more badly, but still wouldn't be enough to scare me off. The lawyers will not be defeated as long as they struggle together with the people to which they belong. The people could be severely mauled, but we cannot be annihilated anyway because we are so many. Fascism will be defeated. We have our backs against the last barricade now. They cannot pass. I'm so glad to have you. We are so glad to have us. Wish you a fruitful meeting. Embrace every single one of you with all my heart. We shall prevail. Progressive Lawyers Association. Now I would like to give the floor to our keynote speakers. First of all, Dr. Margarita von Gellen, the president of Council of Bars and Law Societies of Europe. 
please, uh, Dr. Margarita von Gallen, the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues and friends. I want to thank you very much uh, for the invitation to join you today on the Day of the Lawyers in Turkey. And I must say, I feel very honored to be invited to speak to you at this very important memorial event for Ebru Timtik. CCBE has been following the fate of Ebru Timtik and her colleagues who were sentenced in, in March 2019 very closely and has tried to support Ebru Timtik and her colleagues as far as it was possible. From the outset of the trial where Ebro was accused together with her colleagues and which ended in March uh, 2019 with a sentence of 159 years for prison for 18 lawyers, CCBE and other lawyers organizations associations were worrying about the fairness of the proceedings. Many incidents occurred that raised concerns about the impartiality and independence of the proceedings. And this is also why the CCBE supported a fact-finding mission which took place in October 2019. When Ebro Timtik and her colleague Aitak Unzal respectively started a hunger strike in January and February 2020, CCBE followed this with great concern. On August the 18th of last year, my predecessor and then president of the CCBE, Ranko Pilicaric, issued a statement in which he urged, I quote, the Turkish authorities to do everything to guarantee Ebro Timtik and Aytak Unzal a fair trial, ensure their good health and restore their freedom. And on the same day, CCBE signed a letter which was supported by several chairs and presidents of bar associations in Europe and which was sent to the UN High Commissioner of Human Rights. And in this letter, the trial was described as having been plagued by a distortion of procedures and lack of respect for universally accepted elements of a fair trial. The trial was criticized as a travesty of justice that demonstrates the inability of courts crippled under political pressure to deliver a fair trial. Such concerns included arguments by the prosecution based on digital records, which were not in the case file and not made available to the defense, and the judge not allowing the defense to speak or to engage in any effective manner to challenge evidence and refusing a request to facilitate the collection of further evidence and investigation. And as we all know, the trial ended with all the defendants and their lawyers being removed from the court and the sentences were issued the following day without the defendants and their lawyers being allowed to return to court to submit their final defense statements and participate further in the proceedings. So all in all, a trial which did not at all meet the standards of Article 6 of the European Convention of Human Rights. And in, rights. And in this joint letter, the signatories asked the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to urge the Turkish authorities to immediately release Ebro Timtik and Aytak Günzal to drop all charges, to stop all forms of harassment, and to allow them to perform their professional and lawful functions without intimidation or improper interference. But sadly, this was in vain, and for Ebro Timtik, obviously too late, as on the 27th of August 2020, Ebro Timtik tragically died as a result of her hunger strike. Today, we pay tribute to Ebro Timtik and her struggle in order to ensure that no other lawyer suffers the same fate simply for exercising the profession. In this context, in November 2020, the CCBE granted a posthumous human rights award to Ebro Timtik, and we were honored by the online, online presence of her colleague Aitak Günzal, who spoke on her behalf. In this context, I would like to remind you that CCBE has on many occasions raised serious concerns regarding the situ situation of lawyers in Turkey, where many lawyers have been identified with their clients' cause and unjustly charged with, I quote, being a member of a terrorist organization or another quotation or spreading terrorist propaganda. Alongside with our attempts to support the Turkish lawyers, the CCBE in the past has granted two other human rights awards to honor the legal profession in Turkey. 
First, in 2013, the CCBE Human Rights Award was granted to the president and the bar council members of the Istanbul Bar Association in recognition of their outstanding commitment, perseverance and courage in support of human rights in Turkey. And then in 2016, the CCBE granted its Human Rights Award to four Turkish lawyers, Ayşe Bingül Demir, and I just saw her in the chat, Ayşe Acinglikli, I hope I pronounced them not too badly, Ramazan Demir, and at that time also sadly posthumously to Tahir Elchi. Um, those four lawyers who also have been particularly active in the defense of human rights and the rule of law in Turkey. And more recently, in memoriam of Ebrotimtik's struggle and to draw attention to, to the situation of those who in various countries around the world are prosecuted in circumstances where the principles of fair trial are not observed or respected, several international bars and lawyers' organizations, including the CCB, have decided to launch an annual International Fair Trial Day which will be observed every year on June the 14th. And this day will also be the occasion to introduce a new annual Ebrotimtik Award to recognize an individual or an organization who has or which has made an exceptional contribution towards securing fair trial rights. These are all very important efforts, but we see with this tragic of Ebrotimtik that this is not enough. Lawyers play a crucial role as actors of the system of justice and through their contribution to protecting the rule of law, ensuring access to justice for fellow citizens and protecting fundamental rights and freedoms. However, harassment, threats, imprisonment, surveillance, hindrances and murders against the legal profession continue to occur in the EU and Council of Europe countries and are even increasing in some. On the one hand, in Europe, we have a binding instrument with the European Convention on Human Rights, which protects various critical rights associated with the lawyer's role in maintaining the rule of law and should continue to do so unamended. However, other rights and obligations specific to the legal profession remain outside the scope of the European Convention of, on Human Rights. Whenever we, the CCBE, write letters to the authorities of states where lawyers are harassed, jailed, or even murdered, we refer to the UN basic principles on the role of lawyers, lawyers and especially to principle uh, 16, 17, and 18 which should guarantee for any lawyer around the world to exercise the profession in freedom and without harassment and threat. Principle 18 especially prohibits to identify lawyers with their clients. However, the problem with these principles is that they are not binding. The same applies for the recommendation number 2021 of the Council of Europe on the freedom of ex exercise of the profession of lawyer. You will find nice, nice principles there, but they are not binding. And we see the result all over the world and in some states of the Council of Europe, there are numerous infringements of these principles and there is no possibility to take these breaches of these non-binding rules to a court. Therefore, in 2017, the CCBE submitted that there was a co compelling case for establishing a European Convention on the Profession of Lawyer to create binding obligations for those rights envisaged by these existing specific non-binding instruments. This was followed in January 2018 by a recommendation adopted by the parliamentary uh, Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, asking the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe to look into the possibility of drafting a European Convention binding, binding instrument on the profession of lawyer. And since then, the CCB has been actively calling for the establishment of such a binding legal instrument for the effective protection of the legal profession. 
Such a convention would enable to translate the guarantees and teachings provided by the UN basic principles and other specific instruments related to the legal profession in a binding legal instrument. Such an instrument would not only protect lawyers themselves, but would also enable them to exercise their profession in complete independence, freedom and security without prejudice and without hindrance. As of today, the Council of Europe has, Europe has been carried has carried out a feasibility study with the result that a binding instrument on the profession of lawyers would be possible. The study proposes to transfer the issue or the idea of having a binding, a binding con convention to a working group and let the working group decide whether the instrument shall be binding or not. So the CCB will, of course, continue to follow this very closely and lobby for a binding instrument. We definitely need more than recommendations and principles. We need hard law which can be taken to court. I would like to conclude my speech by warmly thanking you for organizing this important event and reiterate the CCB's strong commitment to guarantee that all lawyers are able to carry out their professional duties without fear of reprisal, hindrance, intimidation, or harassment in order to preserve the independence, integrity of the administration of justice and the rule of law. Myself, coming from a jurisdiction, which is Germany, where the free exercise of the legal profession is basically guaranteed in the sense of the UN basic principles, it is with humility that I observe your brave struggle to achieve a better situation for the Turkish colleagues. And I wish you all possible and necessary strength to, in, to achieve your aims and to, to, uh, to achieve a situation where one day you can conclude Ebro Timtik has not died in vain. We achieved what she has been fighting for. Thank you very much for your attention. The Human Rights Commission of European Bars, uh, Arthur Wirtschbitschke. Uh, Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, dear all, dear all. you for the invitation to be the part of this wonderful memorial and being at the same time keynote speaker and letting me to share with you with these words and thoughts. And to keep time of my speech, I will support my speech with its written form in short. That's really a great idea to help the international memorial event for Ebru Timtik our friend and a great lawyer. FBE for a long time is involved in the situation of Turkish lawyers in Turkey. For more than four years, its Human Rights Commission with my chairing started the project called Turkish Trial Observation Project. Many of our colleagues from the commission and not only take part in the Turkish lawyers trials as observers in Turkey, in conferences dedicated to them or lawyers' situation in Turkey. Strong position and demand on that matter also on FBE website with our statements, articles, and information. What's important, the presidency of the FBE in its meeting of July 27, 2020, decided to support the Turkish lawyers and Ebru Timtik and other for their critical situation demanding a fairly judgment to the local authorities. And now in some words, I would like to make a small background about Ebru. Ebru was the part of a group of 18 lawyers who have been convicted and sentenced to a long-term imprisonment. They all were known for their in representation of clients who are considered opponents of the Turkish government. Officially, those lawyers with Ebru have been in prison since 
September 12, 2018, on charges of membership in the outlawed Revolutionary People's Liberation Army Front. In a profoundly unfair trial, these lawyers have been sustained many years of imprisonment for alleged terrorist related offenses. Ebru has been sustained, as it's well known, for 13 years and six months for membership of a terrorist organization. Ebru bravely announced that she would persist in her hunger strike even if it leads her to death. Ebru was on a hunger strike to strengthen her demand for fair trials and the administration of justice in Turkey. Her wish was to ensure that the Turkish authorities observe the rule of law in Turkey. Unfortunately, as we know, after 238 days of hunger, she passed away. Ebru, during the time of her imprisonment, had support from outside and inside Turkey with no doubt. We all asked time, that time the Turkish authorities and courts for a fair trial and releasing them from the prison. In recognition of her uh, sacrifice in countries around the globe, as Margaret said, facing prosecutor and in circumstances where the fair trial principles are not being observed or respected. And I definitely confirm that, that the international bar associations as well and lawyers organizations have come together to arrange an annual international fair trial day, which is very, very important. And that day will be observed every year on the June 14th. Each year, the conference will be held either online or at physical location in the country chosen because of the level of concern with regards to the lack of respect for fair trial rights in that jurisdictions at that time. The first conference, as, not, as far as I know, will be held virtually uh, event June 14, 2021, and it will focus on the fair trial rights in Turkey. That's great. What's important for this International Fair Trial Day and what gives this strengthness to this is that the steering groups consist of CCBE, FBE, European Association of Lawyers for Democracy and World Human Rights, European Democratic Lawyers, French National Bar Council, International Association of Democratic Lawyers, International Association of Lawyers, International Bar Association Human Rights Institute, Italian National Bar Council, Law Society of England and Wales, Lawyers for Lawyers, and many others. With this memorial, I also have to mention the FBE is also gravely concerned that Turkey has announced its withdrawal from the Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, called as the Istanbul Convention. The FBE in its express position called on the Turkish government to reconsider its decision and uphold protection for women against violence to avoid the potential situation that we had with Ebru and others. The independence of all lawyers and all, all human beings must be respected according to international standards in the whole world. My about my and words from the man is not created failures. The man can be destroyed, but never defeated. Ebru, you stay in our memories and hearts forever. Thank you very much for your attention. Stay healthy in this pandemic time. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, strong and emotional speech. Now, um, for the ones who are unfamiliar, I just want to give an information. 
Now we will watch a video, and this is a video from um, this is a video uh, which includes a poem uh, which was written by Nazım Metran. Nazım Metran was a great poet from Turkey who needed to spend years in prison as a result of his political opinions, and later on he spent most of his life in exile. And today we will listen one of his poems, and it was voiced by Ebru Timtik. So I would like to leave you uh, with the video. Yaşamak şakaya gelmez. Büyük bir ciddiyetle yaşayacaksın. Bir sincap gibi mesela. Yani yaşamanın dışında ve ötesinde hiçbir şey beklemeden. Yani bütün işin gücün yaşamak olacak. Yaşamayı ciddiye alacaksın. Yani o derecede öylesine ki mesela kolların bağlı arkadan sın duvarda yahut kocaman gözlüklerin beyaz gömleği bir laboratuvarda insanlar için ölebileceksin. Hem de yüzünü bile görmediğin insanlar için hem de hiç kimse seni buna zorlamamışken hem de en güzel en gerçek şeyin yaşak olduğunu bildiğin halde. Yani öylesine ciddiye alacaksın ki yamayı. Yetmişinde bile mesela zeytin dikeceksin. Hem de öyle çocuklara falan kalır diye değil. Ölmekten korktuğun halde üme inanmadığın için. Yaşamak yani ağır bastığından. Oh, um, during the campaign, a significant number of bar associations showed solidarity with Ebru and I touch. And of course, before the campaign, since years we we are working together, we are uh, we, we all we are always aware that the European bar associations and the other organizations from all over the world uh, they are trying to support us. And now we will. Um, we will give the floor to the representatives of uh, different bar associations. Uh, first of all, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Özkan Yücel, the president of Izmir Bar Association, who was together with us during the process. And, uh, and I hope he is here because I cannot see all the participants right, right now. Mr. Özkan Yücel. Merhaba. Evet, e, yolculuk halindeyim. Yolculuktan bağlanıyorum. About to uh, 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 travel. I hope you can hear me. I have to connect with my mobile phone. I'm addressing you from a country where the lawyers lie to death for uh, justice, for fair trial. And unfortunately, today we are uh, commemorating Ebru Timtik and also we are saying that this is a day of lawyers in Turkey. However, we cannot celebra celebrate today because as you know, Ebru Timtik had to start uh, a strike, a hunger strike uh, for fair trial, and I'm so sorry we were not able to prevent what was to come in the end. Uh, this is perhaps in the nature of the repressive uh, regimes, and uh, the things that I'm saying now are not only for Ebro. Today, I know that there are many lawyers who were identified with their clients and who were prosecuted with the same accusations. There are many lawyers who are at risk in Turkey. They are detained, they are uh, uh, prosecuted, and they are sentenced. On April the 7th, there will be an important hearing. Again, this is a trial against the lawyers. And earlier, They were not given the opportunity to make their defense statements. And this is the state of the play 
about the uh, procedure. And once again, the lawyers will be brought before the court. And no matter where, we will always be for the lawyers who are trying to fulfill the requirements of their uh, profession. And just because of the fact that they have enabled their clients to use their right to remain silent, these lawyers are being prosecuted. Unfortunately, this is what we're going through today and this is what we are trying to overcome today. This is why April lost her, her life. This is why she sacrificed her life. However, the fire that she lit and the fires that were lit by the other lawyers in prison, this fire is growing stronger. And today we are uh, still insisting on our right to fair trial and right to justice being i would like to commemorate abru timtik and all others who have lost their lives and who were uh, taken as prisoners and we will do our best and we are very decided and determined to complete the struggle that they have started i would like to thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to address you. I do hope that someday in more peaceful, in more democratic uh, environment, I will have the chance to address you. And I do hope that the lawyers will not be identified with their clients. They will not be prosecuted for uh, enabling their clients to use their right to remain silent and to help them make their defense. And I do hope that these will be changed in our country. We are indebted to ITACH and EBRU and all the other lawyers who are in prison now. We are indebted to them and therefore we will continue the struggle and we will definitely overcome. And I have the firm belief that we will be able to make it. And once again, I would like to extend my best regards to my colleagues. And uh, in solidarity and all together, we will overcome. Thank you. Çözkan Yücel. Uh, now we will move to Italy. Biraz zor koşullarda bağlandım. Kusura bakmayın. Sesler de belki karışmıştır. Umarım söylediklerim tam olarak anlaşılabilmiştir. Uh, I do hope that you were able to hear me, not the uh, announcement, but I'm on a plane at the moment, but still I wanted to take the floor. So uh, if I was not able, uh, if you were not able to hear me, I would like to apologize for that participation and it was an honor for us to have you here uh, and now uh, we will move to Italy and uh, we are we will listen the contribution of the president of Bologna Bar Association Italia Elisabetta De Rico uh, Bologna Bar Association was one of the bars uh, who announced that they accepted Ebru and I touch as the members of their human rights committee during the campaign and now I would like to give the floor to the president of Bologna Bar Association uh, and um, Barbara Spinelli, uh, please mute yourself, because, like, unmute yourself. Barbara will help us with the translation. Buonasera a tutti e grazie per l'invito a partecipare a questa iniziativa in ricordo dell'avvocata Ebru Timitic. Mi scuso, ma purtroppo non parlo l'inglese, ma ci tenevo comunque molto ad essere presente oggi qui con voi. Rappresento il Consiglio dell'Ordine degli Avvocati di Bologna, che da lungo tempo segue con attenzione le vicende giudiziarie che hanno colpito i colleghi turchi e nel corso della detenzione dell'avvocata Ebru Timitic e del collega Ita Chunsal abbiamo posto in essere tutte le azioni possibili volte a sostenere la loro scarcerazione. Siamo fermamente convinti che sia indispensabile e prioritario che in ogni parte del mondo siano riconosciuti e garantiti il diritto di difesa ed il diritto ad un giusto processo. 
Giusto processo. Good evening everyone and thank you for the invitation to participate in this initiative in memory of the lawyer Ebrutin Peak. I apologize but unfortunately I don't speak English but it was very relevant for me to stay with you this evening. I am the president of the Bologna Bar Association. We have been closely following the judicial events that have affected the Turkish colleagues for a long time. During the detention of the lawyer Ebrutin Tik and his colleague Aitach Unsal, we have taken all the possible steps to support the release. We firmly believe that it is indispensable and a priority that the right of defense and the right to a fair trial should be recognized and guaranteed everywhere in the world. Giusto processo che è stato negato all'avvocata Ebru Timitic e ai tanti colleghi incarcerati solo per aver svolto con coscienza e competenza la professione forense. Siamo altresì fermamente convinti che agli avvocati debba essere sempre riconosciuta l'indipendenza e l'autonomia, capisaldi della nostra professione, e che mai devono essere accomunati al reato contestato ai loro assistiti e mai devono essere accomunati ai loro assistiti. The right to a fair trial was denied to Ebru and to many colleagues imprisoned only for having carried out the legal profession with conscience and competence. We are also firmly convinced that lawyers must always be recognized as independent and autonomous, the cornerstone of our profession, that they must never be identified together with the crimes alleged against their clients and never be identified together with their clients. Noi avvocati siamo le sentinelle dei diritti e ogni giorno il nostro impegno deve essere rivolto a fare sì che i diritti siano garantiti. L'avvocata Ebru Timitic è morta per non aver piegato la testa davanti ai soprusi, per non aver accettato la violazione del diritto di difesa per il suo impegno a tutela dei diritti civili, per difendere la nobiltà della nostra professione. Il Consiglio dell'Ordine degli Avvocati di Bologna, per ricordare il suo sacrificio, ha installato all'ingresso della sede dell'Ordine degli Avvocati, ubicata all'interno del Palazzo della Corte d'Appello, la fotografia in toga della collega Tim Tic, affinché sia di monito ad ognuno di noi a ricordarci che la democrazia è un bene prezioso che non dobbiamo mai dare per acquisito e costantemente vigilare per preservarla e riaffermarla. We as lawyers, we are the sentinel of rights and every day our commitment must be directed towards ensuring that rights are guaranteed. Ebru Timtik died because she did not bow her head to abuse, because she did not accept the violation of the right to defense, because her commitment to protect civil rights, because she defended the nobility of our profession. In memory of her sacrifice, Bologna Bar Council has installed a photograph of our colleagues, Ebru Timtik, with her robe at the entrance to, of the Bar Association headquarters, located inside the Court of Appeal buildings, as a reminder to all of us that democracy, democracy is a precious asset that we must never take for granted and that we must be constantly vigilant to preserve and reaffirm it. Nel luglio 2020, al fine di richiamare l'attenzione e sostenere la scarcerazione di Ebru e Itac, pensando anche che fosse per loro un giusto riconoscimento per la difficile decisione che avevano preso e portato avanti, li abbiamo nominati componenti esterni della Commissione Internazionale e della Commissione di Studio Diritti Umani istituita dal nostro ordine, della quale fa parte anche la collega Nasrin Sotoudeh. Nei mesi scorsi, al fine di mantenere viva la memoria e far sì che il sacrificio di Ebro non sia dimenticato, il Consiglio dell'Ordine ha istituito una borsa di studio intitolata all'Avvocata Ebro Timitic, che attualmente stiamo costruendo e che sarà destinata ai giovani colleghi. Siamo vicini alle colleghe e ai colleghi turchi e continueremo per quanto possibile a sostenerli nelle loro iniziative di protesta affinché anche il loro paese garantisca il diritto di difesa, il giusto processo e il rispetto dei diritti civili. Grazie. 
in July 2020 in order to draw attention and to support the release of Ebro and Altach, and in the belief that it was a due recognition of the difficult decision they had taken and carried out, we appointed them as external members of the Human Rights Commission and in the International Commission of the Bologna Bar Council. So um, this commission includes also our colleague Nasrin so today. In recent months, in order to keep Ebru's memory alive and to ensure that her sacrifice will not be forgotten, Bologna Bar Council established a scholarship named, named to Ebru, which we are currently building and which will be intended for young colleagues. We stand by our Turkish colleagues and we will continue to support them as much as possible in all their initiative uh, so that their country too can be able to guarantee in the future the right of defense, the right to defense, the due process, the fair trial and the respect for civil rights. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for all your efforts and uh, everything that you have already done and I know that we will be able to work together in the future and we will go on uh, fighting together for the protection of lawyers and the human rights. So now we are going to France and uh, Paris Bar Association is with us. Uh, yes. As you know Paris Bar is also one of the bar associations that is well known with its, its dedication to human rights and right now there is a de delegation from Paris Bar in Turkey to visit our colleagues in prison and to observe the ongoing trials. And they have also accepted a brand I touch as their members. So this is a great honor uh, to us to give the floor to the president, Olivia Kutzi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Thank Hi. you. Hi, everybody. And thank you for invitation and organization of this uh, session which is important and so much important where we were all lawyers appealed by the death of Ebru Timtik last August. That is a situation, an unacceptable situation and we are all in this dramatic situation together for fighting, for helping, uh, for freedom, for freedom of defense, for freedom of defense, for lawyers' rights to be beside anyone for any situation for any court. Since September 2020, the Parisian lawyers have been mobilized and we made a demonstration in the street and we also in the Bar Association decided to appoint and to elect posthumously, unfortunately, a Timtik as a honorary member of the Paris Bar as well as his colleague, Etak Unsal, who has been elected also as an honorary member for the Paris Bar for the situation he is facing today. Therefore, we will carry on asking for his prompt release and we are following closely the judicial initiative and judicial situation. And as you told, just told, we, with the members of the International Observatory Lawyers in Danger, we have sent two members of the Paris Bar Council, Edmond Claude Fretti and Yassine Yakuti, who are currently as an international observatory of lawyers in court today for the celebration of the Turkish Lawyers Day, and as well as assisting, attending to the hearings, which are promoted to the, for tomorrow, 6th and 7th of April. More than ever, the fight for the difference is the earth of lawyers' work. In Paris Bar, as you told, and as you know, Paris Bar is a, probably one of the oldest bar in Europe and you, even in the world. And we have launched an initiative which is for shelter program for lawyers in danger, which is called the REPI, which is to, to rest, to be in the situation and to be in Paris, to can stay, they can stay in Paris for a while, they can be home at home, like in Paris, like their home, and they can work from Paris to continue their fighting for freedom. I will 
thank you for this occasion to speak about so many prestigious co colleagues. I am honored to have been among you and let's not give up, never give up. Let's pursue our fight all together. We shall overcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, like this is a very strong message. Yes, we will never give up. And now we are going to Belgium. Uh, the representative of the International Association of Lawyers and the French speaking bars of Belgium, and also one of our dedicated friends who was always with us during the trials and the fact finding mission, uh, Sibanle Koye, please, uh, can you take the floor? Thank you, Jaren. Good evening to all of you. Um, I'm speaking today in the name of International Association of Lawyers and many French-speaking bars of Belgium, especially Brussels Bar and Liège Bar Association, in the honor of Ebru Her fighting for fair trial and for the independence of justice and for the rule of law is more than ever inspiring all lawyers. Her struggle compels us to stay united and strong and to always resist against all the attacks on the independence of justice everywhere. Also, we must resist each time that states criminalize a certain group of people and design them as enemies, like lawyers, unions, migrants, human rights defenders. Thank you to Ebru Timting for her message. When I visited Ebru in prison, she sang for me a wonderful song, Azme Vejia, from Metin Kemal Karaman. I am unfortunately unable to share it with you, but here is instead a short poem of Bertolt Brecht that I would like to read to you in the memory of Ebru Timtik. The title is, Our Defeats Don't Prove Anything. When those who fight against injustice show their bruised faces, great is the impatience of those who live in safety. What are you complaining about? They ask. You fought against injustice, injustice had the upper hand. So shut up. Whoever fights must know how to lose. Whoever seeks a quarrel is in danger. Who professes violence doesn't have the right to accuse violence. Are my friends, you who are safe, why this hostility? Are we your enemies? We who are the enemies of injustice. When those who fight against injustice are defeated, Will injustice be considered justice? Our defeats, you see, don't prove anything, but that we are too few to fight against infamy. And we expect from those who watch that at least they feel some shame. Thank you to all of you to be gathered today in the memory of everything. Thank you, Sibalia. This is, uh, this is perfect. And today, once again, uh, we all feel like that, you know, how the art and the law comes together when, come together when it comes to, uh, to the resistance against the oppressive regimes. And thank you once again. And now uh, we are again moving to Italy. Um, the, Ita the National Bar Council of Italy and its Human Rights Committee, they were one of the most active organizations on the matter of the protection of, of lawyers for years. And our colleague Barbara Spinelli is not only an eyewitness of the repression that the Turkish and Kurdish lawyers were dealing with, but she is also attacked by the government, by the state authorities personally. Yes. And she was banned uh, to enter Turkey as a result of uh, her very precious work in Turkey. So I would like to invite her to the floor now on behalf of the National Bar Council of Italy Human Rights Committee. 
please, Barbara. Dear colleagues, it's really an honor for me to be with you here today to commemorate our colleagues, Ebru, our colleague Ebru Timtik, the president of the Italian National Bar Council, Maria Masi, and the president of the Human Rights Commission, Francesco Caia, send their greetings and their regard to the participants. And we all, as Italian lawyers, send our warmest greetings to all our colleagues still in prison and to the one who are defending them and are continuing the resistance in Turkey against Erdogan regime. Since 2017, when I was banned from Turkey as international observer, the Italian National Bar Council threatened the solidarity with lawyers in Turkey and took part in all the international actions to try to prevent a brudet and to denounce the human rights violation against our colleagues in prison. The Human Rights Commission promoted a solidarity campaign and more than 80 local bar council sent statement of solidarity and their pictures asking freedom for a, ta for a touch and a bro. To promote solidarity, we published also a handbook for international trial observer, the first one in Italian with a focus on trial observation in Turkey. After Abu's death, most part of Italian lawyers changed their Facebook profile with April's pictures with robe as a sign of solidarity with the independent lawyers in Turkey. And most part of local bar council exposed a giant poster openly in the court or in the municipality. The Italian National Bar Council continued in, in synergy with the Council of European Bar Association and with, with the International Observatory for Lawyers in Danger, its section of reporting and supporting colleagues who fight for the free, for the free exercise of the profession of lawyers in Turkey and has continued and will continue to ask uh, the Turkish authorities to respect the right to, to defense uh, and to inhibit and repeatedly violated the um, rights in the trials in which colleagues are still involved. Ebru gave her life for justice, not only for herself and for other lawyer co-defendants, but for all the victims of Erdogan Port for the unfair trial in Turkey for all the prisoners of opinion whose rights were, were, were violated, for all those, uh, uh, for all the one who has uh, been excluded from the amnesty. This act of humanity, this ultimate act as people lawyer embodied in a 30 kilo of skin and bones has put the world before the drama of the Turkish regime indifference to the respect for human rights. The butterfly effect uh, in Unleashed is of, of an impressive power. Civil society was appalled by the fact that Erdogan let a lawyer die of anger in prison and openly treated all the lawyers who had shown solidarity with the Hebrew after her death uh, with the reprisal. The international media suddenly opened their eyes to all those very serious violations of human rights, which they have deliberately ignored when it has been reported before by live, uh, by detainees who were al still alive or international observer. The death of Ebru has therefore touched or touched all the hearts and the minds uh, of all of us. Uh, and so uh, all that remains is a sin sincere wish that this butterfly effect will not be lost when the spotlights will be turned off, that it will help us to change, the, uh, to, to avoid the death of Aitach Imsal, to let him free, and that in particular will let us to open public reflection on the effectiveness to, of the regional and inter, uh, of the international and regional system of human rights. Uh, uh, especially when uh, human rights are seriously violated by state actors. The priority now is to obtain the freedom for Seljuk Zagachli, Barkin Tintik, Aitach Unsal, Didembeidar Unsal, and all our colleagues still in prison in Turkey. We are so far from obtaining justice for lawyers and human rights activists in Turkey, but following Ebru's teaching, we will continue to work side by side 
side by side in the struggle for democracy and fair trial in Turkey. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much. And now we will have another video um, from Mikhail Aslan, who is a very famous um, singer from Turkey. And he made this video uh, during the campaign to support uh, Ebru Tintik. could understand the lyrics. Uh, this is a Zazaja song. Uh, Zaz I don't know how to call it. So a Kurdish song and uh, and the lyrics are really impressive. And 
when we were choosing the choosing one of the songs from the solidarity singers we we want to have this because you know as um, Ebru was also Kurdish and also we believe that the lyrics are really explaining her struggle her fights um, and now we are moving to UK to the UK and um, Tony Fisher uh, who knows Turkey very well who were there many times who were supporting the Turkish and Kurdish lawyers for years um, is with us and he's representing the Human Rights Committee of the Law Society of England and Wales. Tony, please take the floor. Thank you and uh, greetings from the Human Rights Committee of the Law Society of England and Wales. Like all of you, I've come to pay tribute to the brave and tragic Ebru Timtik, a lawyer who made the ultimate sacrifice in her pursuit of fair trial rights for herself her colleagues, and as Barbara has said, all others facing persecution in Turkey, who are fighting to take the criminal justice system to a better place. Again, like all of you, we at the Law Society have been intervening, particularly on behalf of lawyers working in Turkey, over the last eight years or so, as the domestic political situation has worsened and the independence of the judiciary and the respect given for fair trial principles have deteriorated over that time. I've been part of a delegation of lawyers and NGOs from the UK, France, Germany, Holland, Italy, Switzerland, and Norway who have been monitoring cases where lawyers in Turkey have been prosecuted for alleged terrorist offenses because they have either been engaged in inconvenient cases or they have been representing other lawyers who have been charged with similar offenses. Many others in that group are here this evening. I, like many of you, have sat in many courtrooms in Istanbul and Silivri over that period in courts of many different sizes. We have written reports, made joint interventions, issued press statements, engaged with UN special rapporteurs, filed amicus briefs, and held a number of side events in Geneva. We've also contributed to shadow reports on Turkey's universal periodic review at the United Nations, including a lengthy report on the position of lawyers and judges in Turkey. We will continue that work and are trying to coordinate our efforts more effectively now. Ebru and her colleagues were all lawyers for the benefit of who this work was targeted. Sadly, her fate shows in some respects, our collective failure in securing those rights, which she and all lawyers wrongly prosecuted in Turkey are entitled to. On any measure, Turkey is now an oppressive state. For me, the typical facets of any oppressive state are firstly a lack of respect for the separation of powers between the executive, the legislature and the judiciary. Secondly, the exercise of authoritarian executive power achieved in Turkey through the state of emergency and the amendment of the constitution. Thirdly, lack of judicial independence and compromised procedures for appointing the judiciary. Fourthly, a system of parliamentary democracy, which is under pressure or under threat by the excess use of executive power. And finally, state control or repression of freedom of expression and the arrest and detention of those politicians who express alternative views. This template leads to a lack of effective remedies. It puts the legal profession, both the judiciary and lawyers in practice, under pressure by demonization in the media, investigations and criminal charges, producing an atmosphere of fear and interfering with their ability to carry out their role as lawyers. So what for the future? Well, it's important to remember that this is a temporary state. The present doesn't last. The wheel keeps turning. Those who believe in fundamental rights and freedoms must not give up hope. They must use every mechanism available to carry on the fight against oppression. Look for every small victory. Lawyers have a big role to play in that fight, as does civil society. 
the whole community of those who believe in parliamentary democracy and the protection of basic freedoms. Ebru was a victim of that struggle, the victim of a heartless state. I will finish with a quote from another English poet, this time Rudyard Kipling from the poem For All We Have and Are. No easy hope or lies shall bring us to our goal, but iron sacrifice of body, will and soul. There is but one task for all, one life for each to give. What stands if freedom fail? We salute you, Ebru Timtik. You will never be forgotten. Thank you. Dear Tony, thank you very much uh, for this strong words and again for the poem. And now we will go to Germany. Um, Progressive Lawyers Association is a member of the European Association of Lawyers for Democracy and World Human Rights. I don't know how many years. And since then, we are working together with Thomas Schmidt, and we organize a significant number of activities. Many of them were focusing on Turkey, but we also organize other activities uh, about other lawyers from all around the world to support them and to show our solidarity. So now I want to give the floor mm. to Thomas, uh, and please, Thomas. Well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to participate today at the International Memorial Event for Ibru Timtik on behalf of the ADH, the European Association of Lawyers for Democracy and Human Rights. And uh, you're right, Sharon, that we are very happy that uh, have to have a CH, CHD as a member organization in our, among us. I cannot remember on which occasion I met Ibru Timtik for the first time during one of my many visits to Turkey. Can I continue? I cannot remember on which occasion I met April Timtik for the first time during one of my first many visits to Turkey on behalf of EADH. It was probably at the observation of the political bias mass trials against lawyers of our affiliate CHD. But I can still remember her courageous appearance as a lawyer who did not allow herself to be intimidated by a justice system that does not deserve the name. And I can well remember the last time we saw and spoke to each other. It was on 14th October 2019 in the visitor's cabin in Sillery. On that day, we had the opportunity to visit four imprisoned lawyers in Sillery with our International Observers delegation. In one of the cabins, we met Ebru Timtik. Six months before our visit, she had been sentenced to 13 years and six months in prison, along with 17 other CHD lawyers who received altogether 100 and 59 years prison. Despite the imprisonment, she had already served and the extensive isolation imposed on prisoners, she was unbowed, filled with a will to fight this unjust trial by any means until her final acquittal and release. While we were still talking to her, she was handed the decision of the Court of Appeal refusing to overturn the first instance verdict. I was all the more alarmed when I learned six months later that she had decided together with I touch Insal to escalate her hunger strike, which had already begun in February to death to a death fast. She made this decision on 5th April 2020, one year ago today. All our efforts to save her life were in vain. As a lawyer, it is easy to get caught up in the idea that the fight against unjust court decisions is carried out in court. We have learned a lot about the limitation of this view from Evrotimtik and Aytaj Insal. Their own experience of a judiciary 
that is used against all principles of fair trial to suppress and eliminate political opposition in Turkey will have played a role in her choice of means for the struggle. For 238 days, she fought for fair trials by going on hunger strike and death fast. We miss Evrithimtik as a person, as a courageous lawyer, and as a fellow fighter for human rights, fair trials, and democracy. We will not forget her. Her early death could have been avoided. The temporary release of Aytaç Insal for health reasons could have saved Evrithimtik's life. We will continue to fight in her name for fair trials. The International Fair Trial Day on 14th June 2021, newly launched by an alliance of lawyers organizations, including CCBE, ELDH, AED, Lawyers for Lawyers, and many others, will perhaps be the next opportunity to do so. The Protimtic Prize will be awarded here for the first time. We will not risk we will not rest until all lawyers who are imprisoned in Turkey for political reasons will be released. And seeing so many lawyers organizations represented today makes me confident that we will be successful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, now, uh, I would like to go to Athens. Uh, and I will give the floor to Ezgi, but before giving the floor to Ezgi, I just want to uh, give you some um, information about her situation. You know, Ebru was a very significant member of uh, Cehade, but she was also a member of the People's Law Office, and Ezgi was also uh, her friend and also they were working together and Ezgi is also one of the defendants in this case file. And uh, as a result of the state oppression, Ezgi needed to leave the country and she is now based in Athens and she will speak on behalf of People's Law Office International. Ezgi, please take the floor. Ezgi, Ezgi can you hear me? Evet, duyuyorum Ceren. Merhabalar. Herkese Hello. merhaba. Hello everyone. First of all, I would like to say that this is April 5th and I would like to therefore commemorate Tahir Elçi and Ebru Timtik who were uh, massacred. We know that the fascism reigns and against this, uh, our lawyer colleagues, Aytaç Ünsal, Behiç Aşçı, and all the other uh, imprisoned lawyers, I would like to uh, hail all of them. And I would like to say, I would like to thank all the lawyers who are present here on this important occasion. This international solidarity is really precious for us. And with your permission, I would like to consider this as an important international solidarity. I would like to briefly talk about Ebru and I'd like to apologize because I'm not feeling so well, but I'd like to briefly talk about Ebru, about her uh, human qualities. She believed in collectivity. She always tried to heal the wounds and she was full of love for her uh, comrades uh, and also for all human beings she was an excellent lawyer she was a very competent lawyer and she never uttered a single uh, bad word to her friends but on the other hand she never uh, uh, she never uh, silenced herself against the enemies. Of course, her personality, her revolutionary practice of the profession, all of these are uh, the things that uh, are the reasons why we have gathered. And uh, because of her struggle and because of her devotion and her sacrifice, 
we have gathered here. She was never after any, any st status quo and against the sovereign. She always defended the rights and she always wanted them to be held accountable, both for the clients and for herself. She demanded uh, the rights and freedoms. She said that you will either grant our rights or you will kill us. As you know, she uh, resisted for 238 days. Her personality was an anti-imperialist uh, and internationalist. Ebru resisted against imperialism. Ebru resisted against injustice. Ebru resisted against the instrumentalization of justice against the oppressed. And uh, she resisted against the fascist legal order that sentenced individuals unfairly she was against injustice and she resisted for all those who uh, were being sentenced and unlawfully detained she resisted with her colleagues she resisted with i touch they walked together on this path together uh, and as you know i touch is detained once again and april was the pride and light of uh, the law office of the people and she will continue to be so if she were with us she would be very proud she would be very excited and i would like to thank you all on her behalf and on the behalf of our uh, office we attach great importance to this international solidarity and i'd like to reiterate that Ebru was a true internationalist and it really didn't matter for her where the rights were taken away with the Kurdish people, with the Palestinian people, with the Iraqi people against the US. So she was fighting for all of these different groups. And I would like to once more thank everybody here. And I would like to say that this solidarity, this international solidarity are uh, giving us the chance to take a breath. Thank you. You are and you were able to be here and your words are uh, very significant for us because you were one of the closest person to Ebru and and it's great to hear uh, your words here and thank you once again. And as I mentioned that Chehade was a member of European Democratic Lawyers, uh, um, ELDH, I also have to mention European Democratic Lawyers. Uh, we are a member of um, IADA since 2013, and we are working together in many different occasions. And today, uh, a colleague from Athens, a human rights lawyer, uh, Yota Masorido, uh, is with us, and she is representing the European Democratic Lawyers. And I'm sure that she has a lot to share with us because we know that they were also under the attack recently. And uh, please, Yota, take the floor. Dear colleagues, dear all, thank you, uh, specifically the colleagues in Turkey. Uh, it is a great honor for us to have this invitation in this uh, great uh, day. And colleagues all over around the world, thank you so much for sharing these moments with you. Uh, before we reach in the Greek level, we would like to show as European democratic lawyers from a European perspective, uh, how it is important to react about the repression against lawyers uh, in Turkey and continue the struggle of a broken tick. It is not just a domestic issue of uh, Turkey, but it is an issue of all of us. And European governments play a significant role on that. We would like to mention two points in our recent uh, history and our activities. Uh, a main issue for European states is the police and judicial cooperation between European states and Turkish authorities. On November 2019, we have issued with CHD, ELDH and many German legal organizations a call calling 
for a keys in this judicial cooperation due to the collapse of the, of the rule of law in Turkey. We believe that we have to keep going on with this demand since, as we heard from all the previous speakers, there is a grave collapse in the rule of law in Turkey. The second issue is the ongoing political cooperation because be, between the EU and Turkey on the issue of refugees. As you know, since 2016, there was an agreement, an unofficial agreement between Turkey and the EU in order for the refugees to be kept on Turkey's soil. As a result, the Greek hotspots were created. Now, on 25th of March 2021, the European uh, states decided that they will continue on with this agreement and they are on the final level to make the new AIDS agreement with Turkey in order to see how they will go on with the issue of refugees. So, due to these political agreements, nobody, no European state is willing to take action for the collapse of rule of law in Turkey. So, it is something that it is our duty to keep uh, going on. So, we would like to say also that it is very important for all the lawyers to stay in contact and all together and raise awareness, take position and support each other. We would like to mention two events. Uh, on 10 of March 2020, if you remember then, there was an ongoing conflict between the borders of Turkey and Greece, and the refugees were used as pawns. With the initiative of Turkish lawyers, we signed a, a text with lawyers all over around the world. 806 lawyers signed uh, this text, calling for an end in this uh, conflict. It was a very important initiative and shows how can lawyers be immediately involved in ongoing issues. Also, in March 2021, uh, we had uh, many demonstrations in Athens and uh, police were exercised very bl brutal and excessive force against demonstrators, even lawyers. So we called the international legal community for solidarity to the lawyers uh, in uh, Greece. Immediately, within one day, we managed to get 24 for legal groups all over around the world. And we would like to thank Tsehade for the support in this. So we hope that we continue strong and together, keeping the issues uh, that uh, we bring and keep alive the fight for uh, which a brew uh, lost her life. And like that, we will keep her with us forever. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jutta. And now we are moving to Netherlands and um, Lawyers for Lawyers was always with us during this campaign and during these years that we were dealing with the mess trials and everything. And I just need to say this during the campaign, uh, the president of Lawyers for Lawyers, Irma was not there just as a representative, but also he was together with us as a friend. And, and I'm very honored that she could be with us today. I just want to give the floor to her and please, Irma. Thank you very much, uh, Chiren, for these words. I'm, I'm very honored to say a few words today on behalf of Lawyers for Lawyers in the memory of Ebru Timtik. And first of all, I want to express how sorry we are for the grief that Ebru's family, her friends and colleagues must be experiencing. Losing Ebru in such terrible circumstances is an unimaginable tragedy. Also, I would like to express our enduring support to Aitaj Unsal, Barkin Tintik, Selçuk Kozacle, and all other lawyers who have been convicted in this case, and all other lawyers that have been convicted are being tried or being investigated because of the work they do. Being a human rights lawyer in Turkey is a hard and dangerous job but it is also such an important and essential job, protecting the rights of people and protecting the rule of law. The work you lawyers in Turkey are doing, the fight you are fighting, not just for your clients or for yourself, but for the whole society is an example for all of us. The death of Ebru has made a huge impact in the international legal world. It is very important and wonderful to see that Ebru has received and is still receiving several prizes and honors. In the Netherlands, I was struck by the amount of people, bar associations, 
law firms and lawyers who were expressing their grief over Abru's passing and who were taking part in the several um, actions that we were taking, like signing the obituary or taking part in the minute of silence on 7 September of 2020. Also, there were many new faces that were showing their interest and their grief. I think the plight of Ebru and her fight for a fair trial has struck a chord, not just because it has sunk in that the situation in Turkey for lawyers is unacceptable, but also because it is a universal issue and it is an issue we all must protect and fight for in all of our countries. Many people and many lawyers all over the world are, de are deprived of that right. And in this era of populism, the situation is not getting better. We should never ever take the right to a fair trial and the rule of law in general for granted. Abu has become a symbol, a symbol for the fight for the right of a fair trial. She lives on in all our work. We will not forget her and we will honor her by continuing her fight. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Irma. Uh, and now we will go to go to the US and uh, Ayşe Bingöl Demir a Kurdish human rights lawyer from Turkey who is based in New York now. She will, uh, she will take the floor and, uh, you know, I'm sure that many of you knows, uh, know the work of Ayşe. Uh, she was very active during the campaign, but she is not only doing this, she was also very active to support the case against, um, case about the Tahir Erci and so on. So Ayşe, we are very proud that you are here together with us. Please take the floor. Thank you very much, Ceren. Uh, merhaba arkadaşlar. Hello, everyone. Um, it is going to be a difficult <laughs> speech to deliver, so I will uh, have to keep it uh, not too personal and try to touch upon few facts, few few things that uh, that haven't been mentioned by uh, the previous speakers. Perhaps it is the Lawyers' Day in Turkey. And especially since 2010, together with uh, several um, of my colleagues in Turkey, some of them are here today with us, we started to focus more on the situation of lawyers in Turkey. And that also uh, included uh, international solidarity that we build up with many of our international colleagues who are present here. Uh, lots of effort has, be, has been done uh, over uh, more than a de decade, but unfortunately, uh, as mentioned by, by the other speakers, the situation de 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 deteriorated further, unfortunately. Uh, on a lawyer's day, it's uh, what reminds us that specific day uh, is, of course, our colleague, the colleagues that we have lost uh, including uh, Tahir Alci, uh, the Kurdish lawyers who were summarily ki killed in 1990s, uh, such as Medat Serhat, Shevket Pözdemir, uh, Yusuf Ekinci. Uh, it's, uh, we will remember them and their struggle uh, for a long time. And now, uh, as, as, the, as the why we are here today is to address Ebru, Ebru's struggle and uh, what happened over last year since she and uh, her colleague Aita Chunsal started turned their hunger strike in a that, fa that fast. Uh, I would say that together with, with colleagues here, we try to build up a campaign to prevent what happened. Unfortunately, it didn't work, work. Uh, it didn't, we lost a bro. But I think that uh, her, her and I touches just demand on right to a fair trial, their attempt to draw attention to that very important, that vital right, uh, created lots of lots of attention. And as mentioned by uh, several of my colleagues, that led us together with several prominent uh, lawyers organizations to, to announce uh, an international fair trial day which will be observed every 14th of June, uh, starting from this year. And this is not going to focus only on Turkey, 
but fair trial rights issues across the world. And I think that with this audience, there is no need to go into the details why the right to a fair trial, fair trial principles are important. But as, as was mentioned by several speakers, the situation in Turkey and many other countries in the world, uh, the human rights situation is getting, uh, the, the picture gets darker and darker. And we as lawyers, the, one of the main tools we struggle against that is through the legal roots. And those legal roots, without having the guarantees required under a fair trial rights, uh, does not function. And when you don't have that properly functioning judicial system, that you could seek for justice, that you could seek for independence and impartiality of the judiciary, that you could seek for accountability, uh, or, or fight becomes weaker and weaker. And I think that declaration of the right to fair trial is very important, and it's uh, I hopefully it will become a, a, a very important event by the time with our joint efforts together uh, that will help the human rights struggle in Turkey and other countries altogether. Uh, and it's important to mention that, that fair trial rights related issues do not only focus on lawyers. It actually concerns uh, mainly people other than lawyers, those who are targeted by the uh, authoritarian state apparatus in Turkey and other countries. Uh, in the example of Turkey, uh, the, the way the government has been targeting certain profession groups uh, for their legal professions, their legal professional conducts, for example, lawyers, journalists, po opposition politicians, academics, uh, and so on and so forth. It's, uh, it's, it's actually a direct in using the judiciary, which should function to protect the rights of them as a machinery to inter intervene in their rights by using false accusations, uh, baseless terrorism related char charges against them, unjustly arresting, detaining them, canceling their passports and by many ways. And also it concerned that specific groups in the societies that are being targeted by those authoritarian conservative fascist regimes and that includes, in the case of Turkey, for example, Kurdish, my ethnic or religious minorities, women, uh, LGBTI uh, people, uh, students that, that stand against those oppressive regimes. And uh, us having those tools, a properly functioning judiciary that would respect right to a fair trial, fair trial principles, would serve those, uh, those political and unjust baseless interferences to be uh, to be uh, uh, to be established to be shown and justice for those who are being unjustly targeted in those systems to be done and accountability to be sought so i think that Ebru's struggle together with itach and or all of our colleagues in Turkey to raise awareness and draw attention around the right to a fair trial is very important. This needs to be a light, uh, give, give some sort of direction to our efforts, to our, our struggle. And therefore, I think at continuing uh, to, to do what we have been doing and to find other ways to maybe uh, doing more to address those, not only in Turkey, but all around the world would give us the necessary strength and voice and hopefully will bring the, the change we want to achieve all together. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Ayşe, uh, for the contribution and for all your effort. And now we will stay in the US and uh, another colleague, uh, Susanna Adele, who is representing National uh, Lawyers Guild and International Association of Democratic Lawyers is with us. And uh, together with announcing Susanna, I would like to thank to the International Association of Democratic Lawyers. Uh, today, they, uh, they led us to use their Zoom account, as you 
noticed that through the emails that you have, and they supported us with the technical difficulties. So thank you very much for this support too. And Susanna, please take the floor. Sure. Thank you, Charan. Um, I think um, so many of you are familiar with the International Association of Democratic Lawyers, um, which is one of the organizations that I'm representing today. Uh, I'm also representing um, the National Lawyers Guild of the United States, uh, which is the um, oldest, largest progressive bar association in the US. Um, and we represent uh, lawyers, legal workers, uh, students um, throughout the United States. And we also represent among our membership, uh, thousands of jailhouse lawyers who are um, <clears throat> political prisoners and, and those incarcerated under our criminal injustice system um, who uh, use the law to advocate for themselves and for other prisoner rights. Um, um, today, my intention is to uh, make a, a brief contribution to honor um, the life and, and legacy of, of Ebru um, instead of, of giving a, 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 um, a legal intervention. And, and so I, I'd like to sort of open uh, by sharing a small poem um, by the late Palestinian poet Samih Al-Qasim. And this poet, this poem is called Tickets. The day I'm killed, my killer will find tickets in my pockets, one to peace, one to the fields and the rain, and one to humanity's conscience. I beg you, please don't waste them. I beg you, you who kill me, go. On behalf of the International Association of Democratic Lawyers and the National Lawyers Guild, we salute the memory of the brave people's lawyer, Ebru Timtik. We join our colleagues and comrades today in Turkey and around the globe to honor her life and her legacy. Ebru stands as an inspiration for us all, for all lawyers and all revolutionary advocates. Her courage and sacrifice in the face of intolerable repression has humbled us all. We will invoke Ebru's name and memory in our work and struggle always. The name Ebru Tintik will remind us what it means to stand with the working class, with the poor, with youth and people's movements for liberation. It will inspire us to face down state violence and oppression in our courtrooms, prisons, and in our streets, to challenge the ruling classes, repressive leaders and institutions, and their accusations of criminality and terrorism because of our fights for justice. Ebru will be our inspiration and our moral compass to be unwavering in our fight for fair trials and justice for all of our people. The IEDL and the NLG maintains its commitment to fight for justice for Ebru and freedom for ITOUCH and all of our colleagues and stand in solidarity with the movement for justice in Turkey. We are also reminded of Ebru in the words of two past revolutionary martyrs, Ghassan Kanafani and Fred Hansen. The Palestinian writer, intellectual and left leader Ghassan Kanafani who was assassinated in 1972 by an Israeli car bomb once said, everything in this world can be robbed and stolen, except one thing. This one thing is the love that emanates from a human being towards a solid commitment to a conviction or a cause. Ebru exemplified that kind of love and commitment to her people and for real justice. And Fred Hampton, Black Panther party chairman in the state of Illinois revolutionary black intellectual and political leader who was assassinated in his home in 1969 by Chicago police. His words also hold true. You can kill a revolutionary, but you cannot kill a revolution. The Turkish government left Ebru to die, but her love and her commitment to her cause has planted another powerful seed for the revolu revolutionary struggle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. And uh, after these words, we will once again go to go to the slavery prison. prison. Uh, this time, I will share the letter of uh, Barkan Timtik, who is also in prison for more than three years, who is the sister of Ebru Timtik. 
And with this opportunity, I would like to remind you that she will be in front of the court uh, on Wednesdays, on the 7th of April, once again. Benim bir kardeş, bir yoldaş, bir meslektaş olarak onu kendi ifadelerinden daha iyi anlatabilirim. It is not possible for me to explain Ebru Timtik better than her words, the causes of her action. Explains her labor, sacrifice, love, hope, justice, honor, and bravery. These are all known, and I'm aware that they are the common features of all the revolutionaries. But for me, it is better if we can understand the values and the ideology behind that. Ebru died the way she lived, so anything is an extra. In a humble way, in a clear and simple way, she said that I'm doing what I have to do. She loved her comrades, bureau and justice. She didn't want to be called as the goddess of justice. But unwillingly, she became a hero and my hero as well. For all the colleagues, especially the young ones, she will be so. Taking this opportunity of five April, Day of Lawyers. I would like to commemorate Ebru once again, and this makes this 5th of April even more valuable. I would like to embrace you with all my belief and hope that one day we are going to achieve the rights and freedoms that Ebru sacrificed her life for. From National Union of People's Lawyers, they are one of our sister organizations, and we know that they are also fighting against the repressive policies of the regime, including the unjudicial executions. Shisarina Musni uh, is here today together with us, and I would like to thank to her, especially as uh, it is quite late in Philippines now. So please take the floor. Uh, good evening, everyone. As uh, correctly stated by Seren, I am Zarina Musni and I am a member of the National Union of People's Lawyers and the Union of People's Lawyers in Mindanao. And I represent these organizations in tonight's um, celebration of the life of Ebru Timtik. We, the National Union of People's Lawyers in the Philippines and the Union of People's Lawyers in Mindanao, join you in commemorating the death of Ebru Timtik. Indeed, it is a great loss for the international legal community of people's lawyers to have one of our colleagues leave us in unfortunate circumstances when she was only practicing her legal profession, but more importantly, when she was only being a genuine human being trying to help her people through the legal system. But we see the, that these attacks, these repression and oppression of lawyers is happening in all parts of the world. Here in the Philippines, we at the National Union of People's Lawyers and the Union of People's Lawyers in Mindanao, we provide pro bono legal assistance to the marginalized and oppressed sectors of the Philippine society. But then we are subjected to state-sponsored attacks from surveillance to threats to judicial harassments and even attempts to our lives precisely because of the work that we do. We are labeled not only as communists, but worse, as terrorists for defending our clients who are the oppressed and marginalized sectors, who are denied of their rights to social services like healthcare, quality and accessible education, adequate housing, for the protection of ancestral domains of the indigenous peoples against development projects. And we are labeled as enemies of the state. These attacks against lawyers highly affect the practice of our profession and disregards the basic role of lawyers in upholding the rule of law and the defense of human rights in the Philippines. And it is precisely because of these attacks against us that I am now here in Spain for temporary relocation as the political situation in the Philippines have become dangerous for me, at least for the moment, to continue my practice. But despite the fact that many of our colleagues have fell under the strong and violent arm of the fascist, authoritarian, or dictator, dicta, dictatorial regimes like the Philippines, we know the life of Ebru Timtik, Timtik, and we are fortunate to have known them, to have known Ebru through the courageous lives that they lived, fighting for human rights, 
especially the right to a fair trial, which is very much deprived in all nations in the world, especially among the marginalized peoples. So that their lives, the life of Ebru, gives us inspiration to move on, despite the harsh circumstances that we as lawyers face in our own fascist, authoritarian, or dictatorial regimes, knowing that we are fighting the good fight for a dignified life with all the privileges and entitlements that everyone so rightfully deserves. So for Ebru Temtik, we pray for your eternal repose and we thank you for the light that is your life. Your struggles, we assure you, will not be in vain. For all of us here tonight, may we celebrate Ebru's life and forever hold in our hearts and our minds the lessons that Ebru has taught us through the selfless and courageous life that she lived. May we continue to perform our roles as human rights lawyers as we are needed now more than ever in this fight against oppression, repression, and discrimination that we may see and enjoy a just and lasting peace for all peoples all over the world. Padayon, dagang salamat, and long live international solidarity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we are going back to Turkey. Uh, and it's time to listen our comrades, our beloved sister organization, the Association of Lawyers for Freedom, OHEDE. They are also the target of the regime. Their members were arrested and are still being arrested and their association was banned together with our association. And we are fighting together against this uh, repress repressive regime and we are trying to protect the rights of the people all together. Uh, and I'm very happy and honored to give the floor to Sinan Zinjir. Sinan, are you here? Can, can you, uh, Sinan, microphone to unmute yourself, please. Sinan. We can't hear you yet. Okay, so uh, we will turn back to Sinan, uh, but for now um, we are going back to Italy because today as your menzione is together with us, who is representing Unione Camere Penali and the legal team Italy. Uh, Ezio Menzione is also a very dedicated human rights who observed and reported about the situation of Turkey regularly. And please, Ezio, take the floor. Thank you, Cheren. And uh, Thank you for the initiative of remembering Ebru, not only remembering, but thinking about what the loss of her means for all of us. Uh, uh, I'm here for the union of uh, panel chambers of Italy. It's a larger, a large organization uh, where almost all the criminal lawyers belong. And at the same time, I'm here for the legal team Italy, a very small uh, organization, but very similar to the CHD, to your organization. Same uh, uh, scope, same uh, aims, and uh, somehow the same way to behave. Uh, I want to tell you of the only time when I met, really met Ebru. It was the end of 2019. We were in uh, Sivridi, uh, was, uh, was with me uh, Damla Atalai, who is registered 
in this conversation. And so she could say about the same, uh, the same meeting with Ebru. She was the translator, as a matter of fact, because Ebru didn't speak English properly. And uh, I had the sensation that suddenly the rainy day, it was a very rainy and very uh, humid day, te terrible, really. Terrible because we were in Sidibri, maybe. But all of a sudden, when I was in front of Ebru, the day enlightened. I could uh, see from her eyes that a light was coming out of her. She was enlightened. We didn't actually. We didn't speak about the main, uh, the main uh, trial she was involved. Um, uh, I had attended at the final hearings of that trial, which was a no trial at all. Really, uh, it had nothing of a fair trial. Not even of a trial. Not even the form of the trial. And uh, if they were condemned to so many years, the, you know, I had the sensation that uh, there was no reason at all, no reason for condemning them and uh, no reason for having such a trial. And so I somehow, when I heard that she had started the first, uh, part of the of the uh, hunger strike, I said, "Well, uh, she's right because when you don't, you can't have a trial, a proper trial. You have to give yourself as a hostage for having a fair trial for you and for all the others who are were involved and still are involved." And not only the lawyers, and but in her mind, I sensed that she was struggling, you know, for the fair trial, for justice, as you know, with a capital letter justice. Well, the meeting was quite long, very long, as a matter of fact, because it was very pleasant, and we talked also about. Um, the minor cases she was involved. Uh, she said that she had 12 trials for um, for contempt of the court, for instance. Cases that, for my experience in Italy, they wouldn't even exist, you know. But uh, she didn't, you know, she was, it's, it seems impossible, but she was not worried about the results of such uh, trials, not even for the main one. She was, of course, uh, alarmed for uh, the result for herself and for the others, but not really worried. Uh, things changed when she started the um, hunger strike to death death hunger strike. <clears throat> I wondered if it was fair uh, to put in danger such a person as Ebru. But of course, Ebru probably hoped that something would change, that some judge would have taken the initiative of changing things and uh, handing out a decision more favorable, or at least uh, the trial could take another, the main trial could take uh, another turn. Uh, it was difficult to think that uh, she would put in danger herself such a wonderful woman and colleague. I, I used to say that if I had, were in legal trouble, I would like a defender, 
just like a brew. But we must think about who decided that she had to die because there was a decision on the back. It was not only the government. There were many judges who put their hands in the case. And even the European, uh, European Court of Human Rights handed out a decision regarding I touch when uh, Alas Ebru had already passed away. So there were many people responsible for that death. Many people responsible for uh, switching off the light of Ebru. And we must think about this, how responsibility come from the government and but they pass through many persons, many in this case, many judges, even many doctors, many medical doctors, and so on. Uh, why in Turkey we had so many cases of hunger strikes which finished the worst way? Uh, in a few minutes, there will be the group Yorum who were hit by uh, such things. Because I think that it is because in Italy, for instance, where hunger strikes among prisoners were common years ago, we activated many, we call them agencies or many uh, many people, not only political ones, but judicial ones and uh, ethical and uh, social. And, uh, you know, the case generally was solved without damage, irreparable damage for those who uh, had taken the hunger strike. But in a state, in an authoritative state like Turkey. I would call it a dictatorial as a matter of fact. All these agencies, all these realities which stay in between the government and the people, they have just blown out. They are just, they are failing to hand out their role. And that's typical of a dictatorship. When one decides and all the others, you know, manage to go with him. And all the opponents are, you know, killed off uh, in a social way. Some others are in prison, some are dead. And uh, uh, I think that. This is left to us to think about, and that's why we'll be on her side, not only in this first year, but I think ever and ever, because her thought, her behavior, her ideals deserve it. And so we are with her. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ezio, for your words and for your efforts. Uh, we always felt um, your support and this was more than important for us. And now I think Sinan solved the problem and I would like to invite Sinan uh, for his speech. Sinan, can you hear me? Sina, can you hear me? Geliyor mu arkadaşlar şu anda? Can you hear me now? Duyuyorum yes. seni. Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Ceren, şu anda duyulabiliyor mu? Ceren, can you hear me now? Duyuyoruz Sinan'cığım, çok net. Yes, we can hear you. Konuşabilirim. 
loud and clear so I can speak. Yes, please. I, I was asking if I could speak, but of course, as a person who attends many of such webinars, but I think this is one of the toughest speeches that I will be delivering because he was a dear friend, he was a dear colleague, and he was a dear sister. And I find it quite difficult to talk about her at the moment. So I would like to apologize if uh, I get broken in time because Ebru is not only a lawyer she's also our friend she was also our comrade we have learned our profession from ebro and her likes she was a very dear friend to us and we miss her we feel her absence every day and we really deeply feel the grief every day and uh, in prison, in the protests, we have seen how hard she worked, and I, I'm one of those who was a who uh, was able to see Hebrew's efforts. And throughout this resistance period against the Kurdish uh, lawyers, patriotic lawyers, against the revolutionary lawyers, Hebrew was always with us. She was always with us in our. Uh, hearings and she always cried out loud for justice on our behalf and I would like to also extend my greetings to all the lawyers here. I wish we also had Ebru with us on this day of human rights lawyers in Turkey. We really miss her a lot and we feel her absence. I have to say that, yes, in this territory, in this land, we are going through a heavy fascist period and against the oppressed, against the patriots, against the women, there is great repression. And as the revolutionary, progressive, democratic lawyers for freedom, we are part of the opposition. That's why we are faced with in the intimidation, detention and sentences, but against all such uh, harassment, we continue our struggle. Today, thousands of lawyers continue their resistance in the prisons of Turkey, and I would like to greet all of them. Selahattin Demirtaş, Aysel Tuluk, Barkın Timtik, Selçuk Kozoğaçlı, Yaprak, Behic, and also all the other imprisoned lawyers in the prisons of Turkey. In our statement today, we talked about this. We are definitely ready to continue the struggle of our colleagues who are in prison. And Ebru is the leader of our struggle uh, for justice, for the people of Kurdistan, for the people of uh, Middle East, Ebru fought for all of them, and Ebru is our heroine, and we will never forget Ebru. And I would like to thank uh, Chehede and all the other uh, lawyers associations who are with us. Of course, you not only live with your body, to me, your spirit matters the most, your dignity matters the most. And Ebru left behind a dignified fight for all of us. And from now on, our responsibility to continue on the path opened by Ebru, Tahir Elçi, and other lawyers uh, whom we have lost in their struggle for justice. We will continue this struggle. And our colleagues here, know this very well and we have received a lot of letters and petitions from them for the release of Ebru, for the fair trial of Ebru. I would like to thank all of you for all those hundreds of petitions. We submitted those petitions to the Turkish courts but they were deaf to these calls and uh, we know that the president or the uh, lawyer, uh, the presidents and the judges 
uh, all those panels were deaf to all these calls and they killed him. They killed many more. There are many things that we can say, but we will never forget what has happened. We will never bury this in the uh, dark pages of history. They could have given a decision to release Ebro, but all together, jointly, they gave instructions to the courts, and that's how Ebru was killed, and we were witnesses. As the uh, Progressive Lawyers Association and as the Association of Lawyers for Freedom, we were always there in front of those courtrooms. We tried to reach all those people, all those courts, and we were waiting for the decisions, and the decisions were always being delayed. And we know that, in fact, those decisions were prepared in a matter of minutes, and in a matter of minutes, they decided to continue the detention of April and her colleagues. I don't want to use uh, the concepts that we mentioned, such as the rule of law or democracy. I don't want to use the terms of bourgeoisie. What really matters is the resistance of the lawyers. What really matters is the struggle of uh, Ebru Timtik, the goddess of justice for us. And what really matters is to continue the struggle because they did not uh, use any remnants of the bourgeois law for Ebru or for uh, other lawyers, so I would no, like to thank you very much for your solidarity. Sinan, thank you very much for this uh, speech, for this joyful, for this uh, strong speech. All of these words are coming from the bottom of your heart. We are aware of this, and I would like to thank all of you, all the people who have taken part in this event. As you know, on April the 5th, April started her uh, second hunger strike. And I would like to thank all the revolutionaries, all the comrades here, long live uh, the peoples of the world. We will only be uh, stronger with you and we will only prevail with you. I think today it's great that we are almost visiting all over the Europe and the other parts of the world. And another sister association of us uh, is based in Madrid. Uh, sorry for my pronunciation. Associ association Libre de Abogadas y Abogados. And uh, their presidents who supported our campaign uh, with an unlimited energy. Angeles Kinaro Puliudo is with us and I want her to take the floor. Buenas tardes a todas y a todos. Good evening to everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to, uh, the Free Association of Lawyers would like to thank you for the invitation to participate in this event in memory of the brutal intake. Secondly, I want to express our pain, anger, helplessness and outrage for the death of our Turkish colleague, Ebru, who died in prison after a hunger strike for 238 days. Many work the efforts of the international community of different bar associations from all corners of the world, associations of lawyers and individual lawyers who supported multiple campaigns and requests for a fair trial for a root and take, her partner, Aita Chalisal, and all the lawyers who still remain in prison. Unfortunately, all the petitions were ignored by the Turkish government and the Turkish justice for our colleague, Ibru, uh, as she passed away. In the Free Association of Lawyers in Madrid, we want to express our sincere solidarity with the family, relatives and colleagues of Ibru, at the same time that we need to remark her memorable fight for a fair trial as she was convicted for doing her job as a lawyer and as a consequence of the repeated confusion between the client and the lawyer, pretending that as defenders, we assume the alleged crime committed by our clients. She fought not only for a fair trial for herself and all the rest of the lawyers imprisoned, but also for their clients, activists of Kurdish and Turkish origin, taking to the end her decision to protect the rights of others and to promote respect for the rule of law. In Madrid, 
We know what it is to live in hard times for professional and political commitment. As in the 70s, we suffered the fascists beating people in the streets while they were present and dominant in all power structures, guaranteeing their impunity. We know what it is to suffer anonymous threats directed at trade unionists, journalists, social or neighborhood leaders, and of course, lawyers. As in those times in the 70s, there were daily deaths in demonstrations by shootings by the extreme right or by the police. Activists suffered arbitrary detentions and beatings in the police stations. We suffered blacklists that circulated filled with the names of the activists of any profession who would be the chosen ones as at that time labor and neighborhood offices which were spaces of freedom that were transferred to all places where lawyers carried out their work in which the professional, the political and the social were reunited. So as most of you know, on the 24th of January, 1977, extreme right wing gunmen entered the law office of Calle Atocha, number 55 in Madrid and fired on those who were there, killing five lawyers and injuring seriously another four. That crime was not accidental. They wanted to punish a commitment that must continue to be an example for everyone. The current situation in Turkey is reminiscent of those times lived in Spain. So in the Free Association of Lawyers, we believe that a bruised courage is an example. And in her memory, we shall continue with her fight in defense of human rights and the right of defense. And as a purpose to achieve the liberation of the rest of our Turkish colleagues. As in Spain, we have not forgotten our colleagues killed 44 years ago. We shall never either forget a bruised fight. To a broom, your sacrifice will not be in vain. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Angeles. And now we are going to the um, Edirne prison this time. Uh, as you know, many of our colleagues uh, mentioned Aita Chunsal many times, and it is not a coincidence. Of course, as you know, Aita was also on hunger strike together with Ebru, and he was released uh, as a result of the Supreme Court's decision after we lost Ebru. And unfortunately, uh, and unlawfully, uh, the state authorities decided to re-arrest Aytaç uh, on December 2020 and his health situation is still very uh, critical and he is not able to access his doctors, he is not able to get his vitamins and, um, and we are very worried about his uh, health situation. Uh, but Aytaç is brave and he managed to send us a voice record. Uh, so I just want to, you to listen his words. And then there is a very short video, which is, uh, which is about the petition that we started uh, with the demand of the imp immediate release of Aytaç. Today is the day of lawyers. It is the day of the unbowing lawyers, even if they are threatened with death. It is the day of lawyers who threw their hearts on the oppression. Let us celebrate. Last year, around at that time, we grew hope. Now it is time to make an effort to create an undefeatable hope. Even if I lose my two legs, it will be impossible for them to stop that walk towards justice. Until the end, I would go and let's stay in solidarity in this walk towards justice. We will overcome. I would like to celebrate the lawyer day of yours. I would like to send my greetings to my people, to my colleagues, to my comrades. Take care.
And today uh, we named uh, here a number of significant uh, poets. We started with Nazim Hikmet and we listened to the poem of Bertolt Brecht and many others. And you know, Ezgi was also, uh, Ebru was also writing poems and a colleague of us who is the president of the criminal commission of the International Association of Lawyers, Etienne Lesage, he kindly translated some poems of Ebru and also published them. And Etienne is together with us today and I would like to give the floor to, to him. Etienne, please. Thank you very much, Serhan. Uh, I'm very pleased, honored, and touched to be here in, in the, for EBRU and on behalf of the UIA, International Lawyers Association. Um, two years ago, I went to uh, Silivri with other lawyers from different associations. And on behalf of, at the time, the National Council of Bar and the Paris Bar, I met her uh, at the prison with her sister. They were both together in the same little detainee lawyer's place where we can talk. And I think we have to remember, I remember, and we have to remember the smile of Ebru. She was always smiling, even though she was surrounded by tragedy, being detained with her colleagues, our colleagues, being detained with her sister, uh, for many months and just after she had been sentenced. And that was just before she started her hunger strike. And that was a, a very moment, a moment I will always remember as all of us who have met her in this prison of Silivri. And I think we have to think of a smile. And I remember I saw on, the, on the, some newspaper a picture of, of her a few days before she died. She was hanging on the bars of a, the window of a cell and she was smiling, being maybe 30, waiting, waiting maybe 30 kilos after months of starvation and still smiling. And when I met her at the prison, she was singing and she told me I'm a poet as well. I write poems. And I told her, you know, I am the editor in chief of the literary review of the Paris Bar, and I would love to have your poems so that we can publish them in our literary review. And that was after her death, unfortunately. Thanks to you, Seren, and thanks to your colleagues from Turkey, from the CHD, who sent me some of her poems. And we decided to publish them in our last review, the sixth review, of the sixth number of the literary review that we publish once a year. And the whole review is dedicated to Ebru, you know. That's the, the first on the cover is all dedicated to Ebru. And this is an honor met to her by the Paris Bar, of course, but from all the French lawyers, actually. And this poem, I wanted it to be published in Turkish because I think it was important for our French colleagues to, to have the, these poems in Turkish. And I, I wish I could read it in Turkish. You know, I have heat under my eyes. Biz kiptapan o kuyoruz sis ekrandan, etc. But I cannot read it in, in Turkish, but I can read a few words in English, and she wrote, she wrote to, to me, to, to us, to all of us. Uh, we are reading your book, you from the screen. We write with pen without pockets, we stamp. You are king. Are we people of different words? Our walls are a little thick, a little high. Our tillier has razor blades. Our windows are bared. Our arms are handcuffed. Are you afraid if something happens to you? You have a child. Maybe you are requested. Your loved ones will be sad. 
You will get bored if I ask, take me into the walls outside you. Take me into the walls outside you. I mean, you're out voting. Pool of marble in the gloomy. There are still days to see, never mind the heart. Il y a encore, en français, in French, il y a encore des jours à voir, peu importe le cœur. So that was a poem, a poem of hope, a poem of fight, because of course she was a fighter, uh, as a lawyer, as a, a person, and she was a great person. And it's, uh, it's great to have her a memory with her poems. And I hope in the next review next year, we will publish other poems that I, I'm willing to get from you because it's very important to, to give her this homage. Thank you very much. Etienne, thank you very much for sharing uh, the poem with us, also translating it. And I, I think this is very significant. I think this is a very significant way of resistance, what you are doing, what everyone's doing. Uh, thank you once again. And now we are moving to Turkey and uh, Several Balıkaya, who is a human rights lawyer from Turkey, who is the lawyer of Ebru and many other imprisoned lawyers from Turkey, a part of the defense team. She is together with us and she will make her contribution. Um, I would like to uh, give the floor to her. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, everyone. Have a nice evening, first of all. It is both easy and very difficult to explain Ebru. Difficult because in my professional life, she was a rare species. That's why her loss left a huge gap for me. But in a sense, her life was easier than of many other people's because she was transparent. It was possible to see through her. It was very easy to get to know her. It was very easy to fall in love with her. I was thinking about the best expression that could define Ebru. Shakespeare says, whatever we think, that is we are. So our, our thinking is painted with the color of our dreams. So she was exactly like that. Like that. It was an honor for me to get to know her. And it, it was a whole different honor to be her lawyer. Taking this opportunity, in line with the words of Ebru, both this commemoration and the following conference. As you mentioned, she once said, symbolically, yes, we want justice for ourselves, but our demand for justice is for all those who are subjected to injustice. Her struggle for justice and this conference will shed a light on the struggle of everyone who is struggling for justice. I think this would be the best reward for her memory. I knew her when she was an intern, very young lawyer, a fighter, a very brave one. And she was a kind of person that never abandons anybody. So you cannot give up on her. And from that day, in many parts of the democratic struggle, in front of the judiciary delegations, judiciary boards, on the streets, we spend a lot of time. So this gave me the opportunity to get to know Ebru better, not only as a lawyer, this gave me the opportunity to get to know her in every field of her struggle. At the very beginning of her lawyership, 5th of April 2006, 
Behic Aşçı, another lawyer, began his hunger strike. Behic Aşçı launched a hunger strike for 296 days. And with the demand of the release of her, his clients. And almost as he was about to die, the government accepted his demands and they have issued a decree law that partially lifted the isolation on his clients. So this was one of the most important struggles that Ebru gave in her early life. And we were successful. Ebru was successful, we were successful during that struggle of Beit Ashtar's hunger strike. There was this, there, there were these differentiating futures of Ebru. She was one of the bravest women that I knew, fearless one, full of dignity, determined. The concerns, her daily life concerns, her, her concerns about her relatives did not impede her struggle. And because of this determination, she experienced many hardships. For her sister, for some people who were subjected to violence in courthouses in Gezi resistance, she launched some resistance actions, sometimes alone, and she was attacked a lot. She was battered, but she never gave up. This bravery, this fearlessness, this determination made her the target of the government, of course. In 2013, and in, in the next uh, trial, in 2017, she was both detained and imprisoned. In 2013, she was the victim of a very large conspiracy because there was this informant who was trained by the police since he was 15. And based on his testimony, she was tried with a demand of lifelong sentence. In all the detentions, in all the large detentions and minor detentions, Ebru was treated with a different treatment. She was tortured even more. She was not given water. Her neck was stepped on. They tried to strangle her, suffocate her. And anyway, she was really determined. And after the release, you could clearly see the signs of torture on her arms, on her neck. And this was identified by the doctor of forensics and public prosecutors saw them as well as well he saw the torture signs on her arms on her necks and at that time she saw the injustice and neither the public prosecutor nor the courts launched a an investigation to investigate this torture, just because she was the lawyer of the oppressed, she was the lawyer of the people. She just because she was determined, she was arrested, she was tortured and imprisoned. In this path towards her death, we are seeing a lawyer who dedicated her life to fight against injustice, has become the victim of injustice herself. I know you have observed the trials. Those trials were more like theaters, staged plays rather than fair trials. They were just window dressing trials. And the board that released the lawyers was replaced only after a couple of hours, they decided to release the group of lawyers that were in prison and they were imprisoned once again. But this was very clear. 
They didn't conduct a proper trial. They didn't discuss about the evidence. They didn't let them make their defense. They didn't let them to ask, let them ask any questions to the informants. They have changed the statements of the informants. It was a kind of ceremony on the way towards the final verdict, final sentence. And only in three trials, only in three hearings, the case was closed. And during those three hearings, neither of the defendants were in the courtroom. So they have read their verdicts to the empty halls. So such a person who has been struggling against justice has become the victim of injustice herself. When this is the case, you can't say that we are going to struggle in your stead please abandon your hunger strike. Of course, it's very difficult to say so. We said so, but Ebru said that she was also tasked with fighting against injustice. She said that she had her role to play. This struggling spirit, the struggling person, personality caused her to take some steps towards death. That is a death imposed by the state. Her health began to deteriorate. And according to the forensic institution, she couldn't stay in the prison because of her health condition. She had to be released. She had to be released and receive a treatment and she said and i touch said if we were released they said they were ready to stop the hunger strike unto death but then they have sent her to a prison's clinic a prison's clinic room both Ebru and I touch. Every day she was pressed to abandon the hunger strike and she also refused to receive treatment. This was almost nothing but a prison. She was subjected to noise, light, and the pressure on her speeded up this way towards death. And while Beach Aschu managed to endure up to 296 days, unfortunately, Ebru, because of this practice, could only endure for 238 days. And she survived with hunger for three seasons, for three seasons. By the end of three seasons, her body of 30 kilograms, by August, she was exhausted and she lost her life. We have been talking about the path towards her death, death fast, but the later, what happened later on was even more important because they couldn't even stand the funeral of Ebru Timtik. After her death, police attacked the people and people, police, tried to prevent people from attending her funeral. On her way to the graveyard, because her mother was buried in Ghazi graveyard, she was to be buried there. But then the authorities said that the first vehicle that left the forensic institution was the vehicle that was carrying the dead body of Ebru Timtik. And there was a huge group of police cars following that one. But it was only the third vehicle that carried Ebru Timtik's body. They have launched three dif different vehicles departing from the forensic institution, and only one of them had her body. We went Ghazi graveyard to attend the funeral, and numberless people were there people who liked Ebru, who liked the light that Ebru tried to shed. 
but they have blocked all the paths towards the graveyard. They tried to prevent all the transportation. They did everything to prevent the participation. They used tear gas and plastic bullets to attack against the funeral group inside Ghazi Jemevi and Ghazi graveyard. There were many people. And while she was about to leave the graveyard, she, while, while the people was about to leave the graveyard, they have kidnapped the dead body of Ebru Timtik and those who wanted to prevent the authorities from kidnapping her dead body were faced with rubber bullets and people tried to take all the paths towards the graveyard. It was almost impossible and people wanted to participate to Ebru's funeral. After a great struggle, they wanted to participate and people stood by with the resistance of Ebru. It was also the clear indication of the size of the fear that the state authorities was feeling. Because during her short life, she managed to launch a, put up a, a huge struggle. Her struggle shed a light for the future and for the past. Many lawyers, many people managed to see that there was also this side of the struggle. So Ebru shed a light on not only the tomorrow, but also on the past. I would like to shortly talk about the humane aspect of Ebru. She was really beautiful, her smile, her light, her energy, in terms of all these aspects, she was something else. So it's impossible to fill the gap that was left by her. I believe that her struggle is going to shed a light on the future. It is going to enlighten our path. She asked justice symbolically for herself, but practically for all the oppressed. I believe this conference is going to lay the ground for a basis for our struggle. Ebru's struggle is going to be the grounds, going to be the basis of the ongoing struggle in Turkey. The lawyers are under an immense pressure. Lawyers are having a difficult time in defending the rights of their clients in defending their rights, their own rights, they're under very tough conditions. So standing by with a Bruce struggle means standing by with the struggle of the lawyers in our country. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for this commemoration, international commemoration. And thanks for- Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Giving us this opportunity your words and uh, giving us the details about the case file. I think this is quite significant for all of us here. And now we are moving to Italy once again. And uh, I noticed that we are a little bit out of our time schedule. So um, now Aurora, uh, Aurora D'Agostino is together with us and she's representing the Juristi Democratici. She organized she and her association organized a significant number of events in last uh, few years uh, focusing with the focus of Turkey, but also uh, they organized a lot of other campaigns focusing on the situation of Nasrin and the other lawyers. So I would like to give the floor to Aurora and uh, please Aurora. Hello to, uh, good evening to all participants. Uh, in Italy, not only in Italy, uh, uh, today is a holiday, it is uh, Easter's Monday, and uh, all people uh, in this moment are busy to eat, to drink, to, to make a holiday. We are here, and uh, we are here in uh, uh, many people, we are here in uh, 100 people, and I am very proud to be here with you and with other lawyers and also not lawyers. 
to, um, to speak about Hebrew struggles and uh, about uh, Hebrew's example. But I, in the same time, I am, I, I am angry. We as democratic journalists are angry because in Turkey today, many, too many, too many lawyers, too many democratic lawyers are celebrating the Lawyers National Day in a jail. And because a year ago, uh, everyone I touched in prison uh, went to a total anger strike and because Ebru died. And uh, because I touch is still in jail and many other lawyers are in jail, Selchuk, Barkin, Haichan, uh, uh, many others. Because uh, in uh, spite of the evidence of fascist regime in, Tur in Turkey, and in spite of a protest that we and uh, many other with us uh, have made loudly every day for many years, our government and uh, the European Union continues to make business with the Sultan to sell him weapons, to shake his hands, to give him money and uh, international legitimacy. Lawyers are not all the same, neither in Italy nor in Turkey, not in Philippines, not in Colombia, no, in, in, every, in, every, in every, not everywhere. We love the lawyers that uh, you, who use their knowledge to conquer rights, to defend the voiceless, for a freedom of all against misery, exactly like Ebru, exactly like the other friends in Turkey, exactly those that Erdogan hates. We are angry, we are not resigned. We don't give up for Ebru, for I touch, for all our lawyers friends in, uh, in prison, but for ourselves, because otherwise we would be ashamed to enter in a cartoon to, to defend. April the 5th uh, will be a celebration, a big celebration, when uh, our lawyer friends uh, will be free and Erdogan's fashion defeated. We will be here, there, in Turkey. I will, I will camp celebrating over Itash. It is a promise, but in the meanwhile, we don't stop the struggle. And uh, I want uh, I touch and all my friends free immediately now. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Aurora. Uh, and I will just con continue from the part that you left. Uh, after we watched the video, uh, I noticed that one of our colleagues published the petition that we started uh, to support iTouch. Uh, if you check the chat part, you will be able to see the petition and you will be able to circulate it within your own networks and you can also join the campaign. And now we are still in Italy. Uh, Fabio Marcelli is with us uh, and he's representing the Center for Research and Elaboration on Democracy Group of International Legal Intervention. So I would like to invite Fabio, uh, and uh, I hope that he hears me. Fabio, are you here? Yes. Oh, perfect. Me? Yes, we. Thank you for the invitation, Sharon. In fact, uh, Michaela Ricale should have uh, intervened here, but she had connection problems, so she asked me to 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 intervene in her place. Uh, of course. Uh, it is very important to, to, to remember, to commemorate our dear uh, comrade Ebru Timtik. Personally, I didn't have the privilege to meet her personally, or uh, in any case, I, didn't, I don't remember to have, to have met her. I met many people when I was in Turkey for different trials, but uh, <laughs> I don't have any specific um, 
any specific uh, memory of of February, and of course I'm very sorry for that because uh, I know she was uh, a very a very important and very good uh, lawyer and very good fighter for the rights uh, for the state uh, for the rule of law and for the rights of the people. Uh, I was uh, in Turkey uh, with others uh, in the, the day when uh, when the trial ended, the trial to Ebro, to Selçuk, to White, to all of our friends and comrades. And in that occasion, I read uh, a short message in front of the Silibri Tribunal. Um, we international observers, lawyers from Italy, etc., and all the uh, countries and association to which we were part of, which were very, we were at the time about 50 maybe lawyers from different parts of the world. And we said we are shocked because of the flagrant violations of fundamental principles of rule of law, such as independence of the judiciary, fair trial, and right to defense. The climax was reached yesterday when the president of the court abruptly excluded all the lawyers from the possibility to assist the, to the hearing. We are convinced that at this point, this trial is completely null and void. Protesting against the heavy prison terms inflicted, we insist on the immediate acquittal of all defendants to be attained through all possible judicial and legal means. We express our solidarity to the defendants in the name of the common struggle for upholding justice and the rule of law. Istanbul, March the 20th, 2019. That was the message I read in face of the celebrity tribunal the day when uh, Ebru and the others were condemned uh, by, the, by that tribunal. Now we are more than uh, two years after that uh, event, and uh, we know that Blue died uh, uh, in uh, the beginning of the summer of, uh, of last year, and the other cameras are still uh, in jail. And of course, this is not acceptable. I think uh, we have a specific responsibility as lawyers to continue and to intensify the struggle for the liberation of Fajdaj, of Selçuk, uh, of Parkin, and of all the other comrades uh, of CHD, which are still in jail. And <laughs> we should try to find a new effective way in order to, to go on uh, uh, with our struggle. We know that uh, for Erdogan's regime, the lawyers, the, 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 the democratic lawyers, the people's lawyers like uh, Ebru are an obstacle. That's why he uh, resorted to such a, a terrible uh, repression against them. But uh, we have to, to continue and to intensify, I repeat, the struggle for the liberation of uh, our friends and comrades and for a new uh, democratic uh, Turkey where the lawyers can do finally a day job without risking their uh, freedom and their Live. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fabio. Thank you. And now we are moving to Basque Country. Uh, and uh, one of our colleagues, Urko Ayarza, he will be representing the Eskubidiak Basque Democratic Lawyers. And Urko, please take the floor. Thank you. Well, on these difficult times, the Basque Democratic Lawyers Scooby-Dick Association wants to show today our support and solidarity with the Turkish lawyers. Basque and Turkish lawyers' solidarity, struggling for democracy, human rights, and freedom is long standing. Turkish lawyers have always been solidarity with the Basque lawyers in our struggle for democracy and human rights. 
as we've been of your struggle. We today express our support to all of you convicted or in prison and to all of you facing the repression of this Turkish totalitarian regime. Today, we are here with you to honor and celebrate the life of every Timtik. Let's express our deep solidarity and recognition to her struggle within a poem of Gabriel Eraisti, our Basque Nassim Hikmet. The poem is called, If For Telling The Truth, it was written in 1963. If for telling the truth, they must kill my daughters, rape my wife, sorry. I will start again, sorry. If for telling the truth, they must kill my daughters, rape my wife, pull down the house where I live. If for telling the truth, they must cut off the hands I write with, the tongue I sing with. If for telling the truth, they must rub out my name from the golden pages of Basque literature. Never in any way, nor in any place will they be able to make me shut up. We salute you, Arun Tikkit. Dear Turkish colleagues, you know in the Basque country, you will always have your brothers in the struggle for freedom and democracy. Thank you very much. Dear Ruko, thank you very much for the poem and for the uh, strong uh, promises that you made. We know that, and you also know that uh, we are always uh, on your side and we will go on the fight all together. And now I want to share another video with you. And this time, um, this is a music video which was made by Group Yorum. Uh, probably many of you have heard about Grup Yorum. Uh, the Grup Yorum is a very traditional, significant music band in Turkey. It's like our Inti Ilimani, and they were um, they were the target of the government very often. And uh, two of their members were also on hunger strike, and they lost their life. And the group was represented by Ebru Timtik. Ebru was their lawyer, and they wanted to send a message about their lawyer to us, and we are sharing this message with you. Merhabalar, biz de grup yorum olarak bugün Ebru Timtik için yapılacak olan uluslararası anma etkinliğindeyiz. Ebru Timtik bir avukat olarak hücre hücre eriyerek sadece adil yargılanabilmek için ölüme yattı, ölüm orucundaydı ve bu uğurda şehit düştü. Adil yargılanabilmek için bir avukat şehit düşmek zorunda kaldı. Faşizm, AKP iktidarı avukatımızı katletti ve biz şunu çok iyi biliyoruz. Avukatımız Ebru Timtik sadece adil yargılanabilmek için değil, grup yorum üyelerinin konserlerinin yasaklanmaması için de ölüme yattı. Bizler konser verebilelim diye avukatımız bizim için kendini feda etti. Dünyada böyle bir örnek yoktur. Bir avukat müvekkili için hücre hücre eridi. Bugün e, Ebru abla yok ama onun yarattığı değerler var. Onun dünyaya duyurduğu ses var. Ve ölüm orucu direnişiyle tüm dünyada bir... We yankı... have her voice and we know that everybody is hearing her. And we know that in different countries people are commemorating her. The bar associations made statements after her. You can see the photographs of Ebru hang around the bar associations. On April 5th, day, uh, on April 5th, on this day, uh, we are part of this commemoration. And I think it's very important to have this uh, day uh, named after her because she really showed us how to prevail, how to overcome all these difficulties. One year ago, we've lost two friends from our group. They also died. They were also martyred following a dead uh, strike. And they had to fight very hard. And, uh, and in the end, they had to die. Even though a year has passed since their loss, we will keep on fighting for the values that they shared with us. We have our gains and we will never let anyone get uh, remove these gains from our hands. And this is our song. Yayılır gider Dağların başakların üzerinden Buğday gibi bereketli Dağların başakların üzerinden Akarsu gibi aydınlık 
Kim demiş ölüm var diye bize? Kardeş kardeş atan bu yürek bizi. Kim demiş ölüm var diye bize? Kardeş kardeş atan bu yürek bizim. Hey bize ölüm yok, bize ölüm yok, bize ölüm yok. Bu yürek hiç durmayacak. Bize ölüm yok, bize ölüm yok, bize ölüm yok. Bu yürek hiç susmayacak. And now uh, one of the family members of Ebru Timtik is together with us, uh, Ebru's uncle, uh, Yıldırım, De Yıldırım Deniz. Uh, first of all, I want to ex I want to talk on behalf of all of us, and I want to tell him how we are sorry uh, and how um, how we are sharing his pain and all the other me family members and I want to express our condolences with him. So please, uh, Yıldırım Bey, we are listening to you. The floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Ebru Timtik, I mean, she was my nephew, she was a friend, she was like a daughter to me. She was our light, she was our Ebru, and she was our dearest. She was a beautiful person with her smile, with her uh, face. She could convince anyone and uh, not because that she is a relative. I mean, it's unfortunately, it's a very unfortunate thing to lose someone like her. But she had set up her mind, even when she was at the primary school or perhaps in the early years of uh, secondary school. She was initially a Kemalist. She read about Atatürk, all the books about Atatürk. She read many things. And then she started spotting what was wrong with that era. And then uh, she uh, started to change her uh, position and she started wearing a veil and she read many books and she started spotting out the wrong things in that uh, belief system and then she decided she should she to be a lawyer and she continued reading she read many books once again and she was coming from a poor family she had no father and she wanted to buy a house for her mother that was her dream but then she saw the oppressed people and she wanted to be a revolutionary lawyer. She also received the consent of her mother and she took the right path. She had her own truth and she was, uh, she was on the path that she believed in. She was a great listener. She always used to listen to us, our concerns, and she used to find solutions to us. And every time we were having time together we were singing she was always joyful and she always tried to keep our spirits high we had great time with her and uh, i really miss her the whole family misses her she should not have died such a wise person should not have died she would read everything she would make all the research for everything and she would only tell the truth that was Abru, and that's a great grief. That's a great pain in our heart. We can never forget her. And after she went as a family, we never had the chance to come together. We were never able to sing another song again. And in her memory, 
I mean, we respect her. This is all I can say. We love her. She is always in our heart, in our minds. She will be there forever. But I really miss, we really miss her smiling face. We really miss her talk. We miss everything about her. We can never forget her. I'm telling this on the uh, on behalf of the whole family. I'm sorry. I mean, I can barely keep my tears. And she's a great loss. We really love her. I would like to celebrate the Lawyer's Day of all of you. Thanks very much for the contribution. This was extremely valuable for us to be able to listen Ebru from you. Thanks very much for your time at this late hour of the day. Now, now we are, um, now we are moving to another continent. Uh, our colleague uh, from the National Association of Democratic Lawyers of South Africa, Krish Govender, is together with us. Uh, Krish, I would like to give the floor to you uh, and uh, I would like to take your contribution. Thank you very much, friends, comrades, and members of the Timtik family, colleagues of Ibru, comrades of Ibru, and friends and relatives. This is a very sad day for all of us in memory of a freedom fighter who was courageous and who gave up her life for a just struggle. I am representing the National Association of Democratic Lawyers of South Africa, and our organization shared a very close relationship with all those who fought for the liberation of South Africa in the caliber of Oliver Tambo, Nelson Mandela and Chris Harney and many other freedom fighters. And we know and we appreciate the courage and strength it takes not just to join a struggle, but for a person to give up their lives and a life that was very much in a, a precious one to everybody who knew Ibru. And I want to say that um, when a person sacrifices their life in the, in the form that Ibru did is in, on a hunger strike, it is the highest form of nonviolent struggle. It is the only form in my view of a person who is a true martyr for a struggle. There have been many people who would claim martyrdom, but would destroy a building or hundreds of lives in the process. There are arguments for and against those types of claims to martyrdom. But as far as those of us who believe in a just struggle, and even if it means an armed struggle, there is a just war that you would wage. But for Ibru, she embarked on a struggle with a fellow comrade who is still on a hunger strike to show the world and to show the people in Turkey that the justice system was evil and was wrong and unjust. And as a lawyer, she made the supreme sacrifice of giving up her life. The issue around the legalities, the rule of law, the denial of rights is an ongoing struggle in Turkey. And more especially for those who have been facing the wrath of the Turkish reg regime, namely the Kurdish freedom fighters and the Kurdish people. We in South Africa stand in solidarity with them and will continue to give our support through the National Association of Democratic Lawyers and through all our colleagues and comrades. 
this is a very important occasion to remember this sad sacrifice, but a great hu human sacrifice of a brave person. I can only remember two other people who gave up their lives for the freedom struggle. And one of them was Bobby Sands in Northern Ireland, who was a freedom fighter in the cause of the Irish Republican Army and who engaged in a hunger strike to death. And again, faced with the same type of repressive regime under Margaret Thatcher, there was no relief, but he sacrificed his life for that struggle. And he is one of those persons that we would remember that these are the people who give up their lives for a belief that they will never compromise on. There was another freedom fighter who gave up his life. And this is an unknown little situation in the island of Sri Lanka. And this was in the 70s, a young man by the name of Tili Pan, who also put his life on the line, went on a hunger strike to highlight the plight of the Tamil people who were subjected to the same apartheid discrimination and which subsequently they faced almost annihilation through the attacks of the majority Sinhalese government on that island. So Hebrew follows in the steps of these great freedom fighters and she will never be forgotten. And we salute all the people who honor her and support her and will also not give up the struggle for justice and equality in a very oppressive situation that is ongoing and getting worse in Turkey and which we are all aware of. People are facing daily risk and we have a person like Erdogan who is prepared to sacrifice everything in terms of justice and the rule of law and will be prepared to even probably embark on the road for a military takeover of the country if he does not get his way. But that does not stop people from standing and fighting for the justice and for the freedoms of all the people of Turkey that they believe in. With those words, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity. And we say we are with you in solidarity. Aluta continua. Thank you. Thank you, Krish. Thank you very much for joining us today. And now we are moving to Switzerland and another sister uh, organization that we have, Swiss Democratic Lawyers. And uh, Margaret Kinar Nelan is representing them here together with us. Uh, please, Margarita. Thank you very much. I'm very touched and honored to be able to speak with this big family of solidarious lawyers here. Uh, knowing Turkey myself from human rights mission of IPU and other missions by OSCE PA. I'm speaking on behalf of the Swiss Democratic Lawyers. It is with great sadness that we remember our colleague Ebru Timtik today. She died in custody while fighting for a fair trial. We are still in shock at how the trial of her and her colleagues disregarded all basic procedural rights, as mentioned before by Ezio Menzione. I am appalled after having heard the statement of her lawyer, Several Balikaya, how Ebru was tortured and atrocities on her didn't even stop after her death. Today, on the day of the lawyer in Turkey, we, the democratic lawyers of Switzerland, stand in solidarity with our colleagues in Turkey, whose work is almost impossible. We want to remember Ebru Timtik and the cause she stood for, independent, 
free representation of her clients, and we condemn the politically motivated persecution of our still imprisoned colleagues and join strongly the demand for their immediate acquittal. We urge the Turkish government to end the persecution of lawyers, all lawyers who have been unjustly imprisoned for practicing their profession must be released immediately. Colleagues, let us raise our voices more, more loudly, more frequently, until such barbaric treatment as the one suffered by Ebru Timtik stops completely in Turkey, as well as in similar regimes. We want to thank Ebru Timtik for her work as a brave lawyer, and we will continue to support all our brave colleagues in Turkey in their struggle for a fair justice system and the protection of human rights. I would like to dedicate a quote to Ebru. It's a quote by Rosa Luxemburg, one of the bravest women of the last century, murdered 1919 by a Navy military squad in prison while serving a four year sentence. Rosa Luxemburg wrote, history does not wait. Colleagues, I appeal to us, we must not wait. We should move. We should act more, more loudly, as other colleagues tonight have mentioned. The democratic lawyers of Switzerland on this day of the lawyer in Turkey express hope and solidarity with all of you, especially those in detention, like the sister of Ebru and Aytak, whom we wish strength and courage for the hearings that are going to take place. We also wish to greet Selahattin Demirtas, former presidential candidate and the lawyer himself, whom we were able to receive in Swiss parliament before he was arrested. History does not wait, Rosa Luxemburg wrote over 100 years ago. Colleagues, we must move and act more. Thank you. Dear Margarita, thank you for these inspiring words. And uh, I think Ebu would, would be very honored if she would have the chance to hear that you are mentioning Rosa Luxemburg today in this event. This is more than important for us. Uh, this is quite, these are quite strong words and you're right. Uh, we have to move, move and we have to act more uh, efficiently. Now I will go back to Turkey and uh, Kemal Aytaç, who is the representative of uh, Justice uh, Watch and who was always together with us, um, not just during the campaign, but always. Uh, he is now here and I would like to invite him to make his speech. Kemal Abi. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, good evening, everyone. Regarding Ebru, many things have been said. So instead of repeating the same words, I would like to talk about a different thing. Ebru was very determined and a very resistant person, full of faith. In many places, I found the opportunity to struggle with her. And recently, I was one of her visitors in prison. There, we have been talking about this a lot, but from our perspective, I have to say the following. Yes, she was very determined. She was very decisive. She was full of faith. And she wanted to put out an action 
from a perspective she considered to be correct. We have to question ourselves. I wonder to what extent we were successful in making her voice heard and in hearing her voice ourselves. To what extent we were successful? I have been questioning myself since the loss of Ebru. I wish we were louder. I wish we were capable of doing more things. Would it, would it be possible for us to change the bad conditions that she tried to live in? So from our personal perspective, we have to question ourselves. Yes, we need freedom for defense. And we have done a lot of effort. But obviously, apparently, this wasn't enough. Many of our colleagues made a lot of efforts. They struggled a lot. But all in all, here we are commemorating Ebru. And it's time for us to question ourselves, our tasks and responsibilities towards the struggle. I would like to extend my regards to every single one of you. I would like to extend my regards to the friends, comrades, relatives of Ebru. Have a nice evening. Thanks very much, Mr. Kemal, for the contribution. Once again, move to Italy, but this time there will be a video. And uh, I, we would like to share the video with you. And uh, here is Cosimo Mate Matteucci, and he is the president of the Sindicato Nazionale Forense. And uh, I just want to inform you that one members of the, um, the Sindicato Nazionale Forense is also now uh, in Turkey and she will join the trial observation uh, missions tomorrow, tomorrow and Wednesday. So here is the video. Dear colleagues, I am happy to be able to participate in this important event, which involves that part of the legal profession that was chosen not to bend and not to give up. The association that I represent here and uh, of which I am president, MGA, is the National Italian Forensic Union, which uh, among other things, is committed to defense of human rights, because we are convinced that the lawyers cannot escape to the role of defenders of the right of everybody, of defenders of democracy against any authoritarian drift and old fascism. In this, we feel deeply and close to us your battle for justice, which uh, since last September was become our battle and the battle of all Italian lawyers in the light of uh, the unanimous support of OCF, the Italian Forensis Congressional Organization, which politically represent all Italian lawyers. We are grateful to OCF and uh, his coordinator, Avvocato Giovanni Malinconico, for this support. The tragic death of a colleague, of our colleague, Ebru Timtik, to us memory, this meeting is dedicated as a triggered uh, reaction in Italy, an uh, unacceptable death of a young woman, of a colleague who had chosen to fight for justice, broke down the veil of hypocrisy beyond which the international community hides. This is the reason that prompted us to launch a really under strike, an important initiative which involved of people. Since September 26 till today, in almost 200 days, the rally was never stopped and will not stop. Many people have already fasted to three days each and very many here, not only in memory of them, but to ask our government and the European institution to intervene. Our battle was entered many places, involving not only lawyers, but representatives of the civil society, human rights activists, representative of institution, ordinary people. 
this was show as how the struggle for right is living and lifelong and how this struggle can unit different people in a single message. Europe was a duty to defend people and right, otherwise it was failed. As MGA, we will continue to fight for Europe and its member states to react to what is happening in your country, where delirium, where the delirium of power sends anyone who expresses a different opinion into jail. Erdogan's regime is a, a representation of the worst fascism and uh, a Europe unable to react, bent ben to, to commercial interest, will never be our. I conclude by thanking you again for the invitation and your assistance, launching a call for all liars in the world to unite and fight in defense of uh, the right or weakest. Cross our fight. So now uh, we are moving to Turkey once again. And this time uh, I will invite a very young colleague of us. She's a member of uh, Progressive Lawyers Association Istanbul Branch's Executive Board. And she's also working at the People's Law Office Turkey. And she was the intern of Ebru. So I believe that she's the one who can who can explain uh, a bit more about Ebru to us. So Seda, please take the floor. Uh, Seda, kendini mikrofonu açar mısın canım? Seda, could you turn your turn on your mic, please? Hello. I have listened to all the speeches and all of them were beautiful and I am really honored. I'm glad to be part of the panelists here so that I can talk about Ebru. A year ago today, Ebru and I touch had taken the decision to continue their hunger strike until death for fair trial. We've been with them throughout the process and we had the solidarity of everyone all around the world, many people, and people heard Ebru and Aytaç's name all around the world. And today we are once again seeing that from different continents, many people gathered and uh, fought for them. Ebru and Aytaç showed us what we can achieve together. As the intern of uh, Ebru Timtink, I would like to explain you how she approached the young uh, lawyers. And to do that, I want to quote from her from time to time. She always encouraged the interns when we feel incompetent as, and when we say that we cannot do that, this because we are interns. She always used to tell us that uh, this is just a process and it's only a matter of time and we were already competent to do whatever we needed and she did not say this just to motivate us she really meant that and after her detention she wrote to me i uh, i am I'm a, you are my lawyer and i'm not joking i know that I have a lawyer who's an idealist and who is agile. And in the first the first hearing, she appeared. Uh, that was my first job as a lawyer. And I had taken my certificate the day before the hearing. And I thought that I would be able to uh, go and talk to her. But the gendarmerie got really panicked when I tried to uh, reach Ebru because I just wanted to say hi uh, to Ebru and the other people but all of the all of a sudden the gendarmerie uh, decided to use stronghold and uh, I couldn't do anything I was shocked and later Ebru wrote to me 
on that was your first hearing and you really exceeded all the boundaries this means that you can go beyond all the things that we are uh, told and she was never told i mean she, she would never do what she was told she always did what she wanted to do she was able to bring down the status quo she always told us that uh, this profession shaped uh, the society she always gave us examples from the lives of Denis Gesmish or his lawyer or the lawyers of Rosenbergs and she used to tell us how those lawyers uh, tried to protect the children of Rosenbergs after uh, they had died and uh, one of her clients was Nuriye Gülmen and she was kept in uh, a hospital and she wasn't able to take a bath because she was uh, locked down in the prison and it was Ebru who helped her to take uh, a shower. I cannot t take a bath and uh, also she had another client. Uh, Kemal Delen. Uh, this person was shot and unfortunately the perpetrators uh, were not uh, were not given any serious sentences and uh, I remember how she embraced the mother of that client because the mother was feeling uh, very bitter about the result of the case and later on I can send you the photographs of this embrace so I would like to say that Ebru always gave us an idea how to practice our profession and we've really learned a lot from Ebru in another letter she talks about the profession this is what the letter reads of course getting a license is does not mean that you are a lawyer you need to internalize it and once you do that that will be with you until the death and that will be part of your identity it will not only be a profession of course it's possible for you to make money and if i cannot practice my profession probably i can cook something and then sell them but i can never change my profession because being against injustice that has now become a part of my personality and i do hope that you will love this profession as much as i do and about the unlawful detention she continued her resistance until the very end and she was always against the status quo like i said and she had an awareness of the rights that went beyond her office and that uh, also covered her life on the streets she resisted and after her detention she continued her resistance against injustice she tried to invent new ways of doing so and she always uh, found one and in the end she continued with the hunger strike and finally the death strike she had once said that you want to kill us politically and whether this will be in silence or by resistance i will decide that and she did everything she did with her uh, identity as a lawyer and until the last minutes of her life, she continued to defend the rights of the people. Very recently, she was trying to prevent the hunting of a rare species in her uh, town. Uh, Ebru was very uh, mad about the decisions allowing the hunters to hunt that rare species and she was getting worried uh, about this matter even on her last days and in a protest that she conducted uh, in the courthouse she said that even if the lawyer dies that lawyer will continue defending the rights in his or her grave and before she lost her life she asked us to keep i touch alive 
And this became true thanks to her. I touch was released and I touch was able to join us. But before her, uh, I touch treatment was completed, he was detained once again and they took away his freedom because of their great anger towards our gains. And this is as clear as daylight, because when Aytaç was detained once again, we know that this became uh, the news in almost all major uh, news uh, channels. So the lawyers have resisted, the lawyers had their gains, and now there is this great anger towards this gain. And we want touch back. We want to provide the treatment that he deserves. And we can only do that as we did in the past. And for that, we need your hands. So give us your hands and let's get organized. And once again, let us give our ears to Ebru and to bring, to take back Aytaç's freedom. Let's fight together. Thank you. Uh, now I know that the time is ticking and I will try to shorten my parts. And now we are moving to UK again and Deepa Driver is together with us and she's representing the Halden Socialist Lawyers. And please, Deepa, the floor is yours. Thanks, Karen. Uh, firstly, huge solidarity to um, Seda, um, to Esgi and to all of uh, um, Ebru's friends and colleagues and loved ones. Um, it is obviously a very, um, it, it is an honor, but it is also a very sad privilege uh, to speak to you today on behalf of the Holden Society of Socialist Lawyers. Um, when I was um, researching what I was about to write, I came across a letter that Ebru wrote from Silivri Prison describing how her childhood with her courageous mother, who herself only studied till elementary school and was widowed at the young age of 22 with, with young children, and the subsequent change in the financial and personal circumstances that Ebru faced gave Ebru um, an insight into injustice. She held on to this understanding both in bravely living her life and in the message she sent by giving up her life in order to secure justice. Having worked in um, a variety of jobs, which included local radio, running a cafe, um, Ebru had a number of skills and different jobs, and she was inspired by Selchuk Kozagashli to de dedicate her life to being a revolutionary lawyer and delivering justice to all those who suffered around her. Ebru's commitment to seeking justice for those whom she advocated for was absolute. And indeed, it's the result of her courage and the consequence of this courage that she was put through such a distorted and brutal trial and sentence. The harassment and persecution of Ebru, Aitak, and others uh, particularly highlights the deep challenges we, play, we face as a society from powerful actors who define the law, administer the justice systems and deny us justice. There is no justice really without due process, without the rights to free expression, association and protest, and the rights to trustworthy legal advice uh, and the basic principles of a fair trial, all of which were neglected in Ebru's case. Indeed, Ebru's example and the tragic end of her life reminds us very starkly that across the world, we must show courage and stand in solidarity with all those who are being denied due process. And this extends to Stephen Donziger in the US who is being persecuted by Chevron via private judicial mechanisms and denied justice because he helped poor Ecuadorian indigenous people receive justice for the pollution of their water by Chevron. Charles Hector in Malaysia, a lawyer who's being targeted by loggers for his commitments to those experiencing uh, the hardships of their living environments being destroyed and closer to home in the UK, the absence of justice for the family of Belfast lawyer Pat Finnegan, who was murdered and in London in the arrest and harassment of legal observers in the past week um, who have been monitoring protests and in the breach of due process, attorney-client privilege and 
the huge amount of psychological torture experienced by publisher and political prisoner Julian Assange, who remains to this day in a maximum security prison, locked down 23 hours out of 24 at the behest of the war criminals whose actions he helped reveal. Those who choose to define the law to enrich a few and to empower elites and prevent challenge, scrutiny and protest must be stopped. The aim of, they have when they're persecuting individuals, um, including Ebru, through their authoritarian actions is not just to destroy them and their loved ones, but also to send a strong message to the rest of us, not to dare consider following their wonderful examples. Barbara was saying earlier, and she's right in saying that we must not wait for more martyrs to give up their lives in order that uh, we open the eyes of those around us. Uh, that is why our campaigning work, our efforts at education, our work in the workplace are, are really important. And we must make sure that for every Ebru, for every Julian Assange, for every Stephen Donziger who gives up their lives, uh, 10 other Ebru stand up in support of justice. So as we stand together globally in solidarity today at this meeting, where I'm amazed at the array of speakers who have gone before me from all corners of the world and from all walks of um, the, ju the judicial profession, we do so because we want to send a strong message to, to those who persecuted Ebru that we are inspired by Ebru and we will demand transparency, accountability, and importantly, a rebalancing of power so that the state and corporations serve citizens and the community rather than using their power to stamp on us. So huge solidarity from the UK, from the Holden Society. And um, we are with you, Sharon and others. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deepa. And uh, now we are very close to the end. We will watch three videos uh, subsequently. First of all, we will go to Japan and uh, the Secretary General of the Confederation of Lawyers of ASEAN and the Pacific, uh, uh, Jun Susamuta, uh, is sending his messages to us by a video. As you know, this is quite late in Japan, so it's not, imp it's not possible for him to, to join us today. And later on, we will watch the message from Kerry McLean from the National Lawyers Guild, again from the US. And Kerry today organized an impressive event uh, in the US uh, on behalf of National Lawyers Guild. And it was also a memorial event um, for Ebru Timtik. And, and uh, I'm sure that she will go on the work that she is doing and it was really impressive. And later on, we will once again go to France and Matthew Bagart uh, will uh, share his expressions, uh, his opinions with us by a video on behalf of Defense Without Borders, Solidarity Lawyers. I just need to mention this. Um, now they also have uh, two observers in Turkey and, and, and they are doing this work for years and years and we are very thankful. We are very great, grateful for their work. And later on, we will have the closing speech and we will finish. Thank you very much for your patience. And now we are starting with uh, Yun Sasamuta. Hello, I am the Secretary General of the Confederation of Lawyers at Asia and Pacific Collab. In 2016, Chihari President Sergei joined the meeting in Nepal for the first time to contact us. Sergei often contacted me to support the Turkish lawyers. Since then, Collab has been in solidarity relationship with Chihari and Turkish lawyers' organizations. I have also attended a court hearing in Istanbul two times. In Asia, we can see oppressions against lawyers in several countries, such as a violent attack against the people lawyers. Those are very serious problems in court. The massive arrest and prosecution of lawyers in Turkey However, they attracted lots of attention. In Japan Federation of Associations, many human rights lawyers supported the defense Turkish lawyers. 
In Japan, there are also attacks on lawyers. The government does not directly suppress the activities of lawyers, but big corporations and influential people sometimes attack the activities of lawyers by filing lawsuits against human rights lawyers. In early March, UN Congress on Prevention of Crime was held in Kyoto, Japan. There was a session in the memorial of the 30th anniversary of the UN Basic Principles on the Law of Lawyers. The UN Special Rapporteur on the Independence of Judges and Lawyers and the International Lawyers Organization, like IBA, UIA, Law Asia, attended it. A monitoring system of the UN Basic Principles was suggested by international and Japanese lawyers' organizations. The basic principles on laws of lawyers should be a strong norm. Lawyers have a mission to protect the rights of all vulnerable people, even if they belong to anti-government organizations. Lawyers' professionals should not be interfered by anybody and not regarded as the same thought as their clients. They are all stipulated in the UN basic principles. Protecting the lawyer's work and activities is also a human right in order to protect human rights of all people. It is necessary to codify a right to protect lawyer's work into one of international human rights for all people. We need to make our voices louder and internationally to defend the work of lawyers as human rights defenders. Let's protect the activity of lawyers and fair trials together with such a common international goal. Thank you. My name is Carrie McLean, and I'm a member of the National Lawyers Guild. I continue to mourn the death of Ebru Tintik. When I think of Ebru's courage and sacrifice, I am humbled. I'm inspired by the perseverance of all of my brave comrades in Turkey engaged in the struggle against a fascist government, and I stand in solidarity with you until the victory. On August 27, 2020, our colleague Ebru Timtik took definitely back her liberty after 238 days of hunger strike in a tragic end to her struggle for justice. Sentenced in 2019, more than 13 years in prison, she took in the winter of 2019 one of the most committed and dangerous paths in her demand for justice and fair trial. She was unfortunately never heard nor even temporarily released for health reasons, despite a very alarmist report about her health situation issued at the end of July 2020. We shall never forget our colleague, and we shall never forget that this terrible and tragic story is similar to that of tens of thousands of other lawyers, journalists, intellectuals, civil servants, unfairly intimidated, harassed, sentenced, and detained. Such stories have been on the rise since 2016, with more than 307,000 proceedings for terrorism having been opened in Turkey over the past years, according to the counts of the Arrested Lawyers Initiatives. And amongst them, nearly 1,500 lawyers. The recent creation of the International Fair Trial Day and of the Ebru Timtik Award is another step to shed light on these terrible human rights violations. And we shall act in a global movement of civil society to lead our governments to take positive and material actions 
to prevent such violations and repair the harm done when it is not too late. We shall not, we shall never remain silent. The struggle of Hebrew must remain as a living wound for all of us, for our whole profession, and strive us to continue exhorting to action, peaceful resistance, and call for justice. I remember my last visit to Hebrew in Silivri, a few weeks before she left us, where she sang me a song about her mother she was in detention and led me to poorly sing Belachau in return. I want to remember this last visit, her voice, which could never be silenced, her strength and her determination. We must inspire ourselves from this tragic loss and make it an additional strength because we cannot conceive of a lawyer being prosecuted for the people he defends because it is our responsibility to shed light over these serious violations of human rights and because it may not be too late for other political prisoners, including our colleagues, still detained, prosecuted and harassed. We will carry on walking side by side with our colleagues who seek relentlessly for justice. Dostum, 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 
dostum gelsene can. Dear colleagues, now we we are closing the program. But first of all, uh, I would like to thank thank you all one by one because I know that it is too late and uh, we are still here, 78 people. Uh, it's more than great. I would like to name our interpreters who made a great job today, and they were always with us whenever we organized such events to support us. You know, some of them, one of them, at least from the courthouses, when he was there to support you with the interpretation, Eren Bulalar and Işıl Demirakın, they made a great work today, and I'm sure that they're quite tired. And also Charlotte and Mina, they supported us with, the uh, with all the technical difficulties today. And uh, the last video was a kind of a surprise from our young colleague who is sharing the screen. I was waiting this video at the end and uh, everybody who were singing at that video are the members of Progressive Lawyers Association. And we made it during the hunger strike and, and the lyrics are quite significant for us because it says, my friend, my friend, after you passed away, I couldn't eat, I couldn't laugh, and anything that I am doing, they, they are meaningless. So this is not a word by word translation, but this is the meaning, at least this is what, this is how we feel. But today we are very honored. Uh, today we once again understand that we are all stronger when we, are all together. And I know that we will go on working together. So thanks to our colleagues, this was a great, great reminder. I also want to finish my words with Rosa Luxemburg. We were here, we are here, and we will be always here. And before finalizing the program, I would like to ask you to open your uh, cameras uh, if you would like to, and we would like to take a picture of all of us and to share this with the people who could not join us today. And uh, once again, thank you. Thank you very much for your participation and um, for all your efforts. But I do not know how to change the screen. So this is... I am trying to do this. Yep. Is it? Wow. 
Okay, I do not know how to do this. If somebody knows it, I would try to do this. Yeah, I did it. Okay, perfect. So thank you again. Thank you. Long live international solidarity. Thank you. And we will see each other again. Thank you. Bye, Bye.